Only joking. Uh, all right, guys. <laughs> Hello. <Bye. laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, we, we had a little bit of a, a scare, I will say, just um, like 15 minutes beforehand, I sign up and I can see perfectly what's going on. I just can't hear a thing. So <laughs> we did have some microphone scares there, but thankfully uh, we got that sorted literally about 30 seconds before eight o'clock. So yeah. <laughs> we just yeah. have to sort things out, but thanks for sticking with us. Anybody who's still there, by all means, let yourselves be known in the chat. So on this episode, top 10 list, well, top five list technically, because there's three mm -hmm. of us this time, um, I've got to, a couple have been waiting to get on the show for quite a while, actually. So, uh, you know, lovely Mike and Judy from the Nerd Shelves. Hello. <laughs> All that. If you have yeah. not heard of them, then where have you been? Seriously, check out this. They have got a YouTube channel as well. This says 966 subs on here. A, that is too low, period. But B, by the end of the stream, I want that at a thousand. So anybody who's in the chat or watching this, who watches it from the start, go tell your friends, get another 34 people and find them and bump that to a thousand. That would be a milestone for any video I do to sort of have the initiative work so well that we actually bump a milestone in the same video. That would be pretty sweet. You would uh, be our that's... heroes forever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. So see what you can do on that if you haven't subscribed already. But uh, this top five list that we're doing is actually uh michael's idea at the end of the day because what i tend to do is come up with a few ideas or I let the patreons vote on the list i've given them a massive load of vote at the moment then i throw them at people and just say is there anything you kind of like from these and on this occasion michael had a better idea so what was this all about it was judy's idea actually i just pitched it <laughs> oh, so oh sorry right <laughs> credit where credit's due then yeah <laughs> My bad. that's okay yeah, well it compared to you guys i'm pretty new gamer in board games world. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of games for me, I don't really grab it at the first play. So I thought, hey, I don't think anyone's done this. Why don't we chat about this? I believe it's there's, not... yeah, there's so many new gamers out there, right? So they probably agree with some of them. Mm -hmm. No, it is a, a common list, actually. So, sorry, not a com an uncommon list, but, <laughs> it's what, but it is one of those things where like oh you know game that needs second play i wonder um, this will be a really cool thing and i thought well how are we going to do because the last time i had two people on the last couple mm -hmm. of times it's been a uh, my list and their list in a sense ah. but this time it's like oh each we got our individual so it's like okay we better make this five then because my streams go on to like two hours because we can't <laughs> stop talking with 20 games how are we going to do it with 30 so here now we at least get 15 and you know, if we finish earlier than that time, as long as you've got nowhere else to go, we'll just let the chat chime in with a few <laughs> suggestions and bits yeah. like that, which is always good fun. But I thought when I was brainstorming this list, it was going to be like a, like a pinch. You know, I was like, yep, I'm going to come up with a ton of ideas. I struggled to get six because <laughs> I actually seem to find that even though I have got a list of five here, my opinion of a game doesn't drastically change. Mm. Uh like from one bit to the next like if i wasn't a fan of it before it hasn't immediately suddenly garnered <laughs> massive right, yeah. respect but then the five that i've got are usually a case of oh i like it fine or it's meh i'm not seeing the the light and then i play it some more times and oh i have seen a light and we're not taking the uh the second play too literally because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it might be like third play or subsequent plays but yeah. essentially the first play was not enough or opinions changed since then Mm -hmm. uh, by all means, chat to let us know if audio is good. By the sound of it, it's all pretty good. So hello to Mark. Hello to Dilo. Uh, hello to Leon. Subscribing now. Good. Well, that's one out of the 34 yeah. we need. All right? We just so. saw it. It just popped up on our screen here. And I Yay. was just about to say 967. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, you can have like a running total. All right. Yeah, great. You can have the live total on your side then. That'd Let's do that. <laughs> Over that. And I so rarely get it the first time. Then again, I rarely go under 3.2 in complex. Oh, I, I suppose you're mm. talking about the board game geek rating in that sense. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. But I mean, it, it kind of varies for all. But no, I just couldn't think of too many. There was a couple that missed the list that I was tempted to. And I thought like, okay, my opinion improved since the first time, but I still didn't really like it. So right. it's not like... <laughs> It's not like it made it completely wordy, but no. All right. Exactly. I, I think that's one of one of I don't know about Judy because we didn't really discuss it. So it's a surprise for us. But <laughs> separate. Yeah, separate. Um, yeah. Oh, but that good. was yes, one, that was one of my criteria was 
I mean, I have games where I said, oh, this needs a second play. And then I played it the second time and nope, still don't like it. So <laughs> that didn't make the list. It has to be a game that I actually no really... <laughs> Yeah. People like it. <laughs> right. No offense, but at least I tried. You know, so. yeah, it's the effort counts. You know, it's a, yeah. I put in the effort, but your taste is still bad. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, that all worked. Actually, yeah. that sounds that sounds like me actually with a few friends I've got. I've got, I've got some friends that are into a lot of the very beige euros and stuff like that. And it's kind of like, like I'm gonna try and like this game, and then after like two plays of it, you know, I'll sort of come out. And it's like I tried. I honestly tried. Hey, it's I, too much beige. <laughs> I, we're not talking about Stefan Feld games, are we now? <laughs> Maybe. Not not as often actually. No, this is like the beige of beige. Like okay. you know. Barely even heard of this designer. It will have some Latin name. Yeah. <laughs> it will be literally the beige color on there. Feld's a whole different story. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can have a whole video on, on, on the beigeness of Feld, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he put some color in his game. It's not entirely beige. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> they're just super dry. But yeah. all right, let's, let's have a bit more. Let's start with the tens. Now, normally it's guests go first, although in this case, because I am a British gentleman, ladies first. <laughs> it's a well, thing. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so I guess we'll, start, well, we'll start with say we'll start with Judy and go down the line. So Judy, yourself, and then myself. Sure. And I guess we're not ten, are we? I guess we're starting with five. You have a fair point on that. <laughs> See yeah. how prepared we are for this show. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. This we is, just this want is... to make sure everyone's watching and catch that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, they'll catch it. And they'll remind me of it. I mean, this is what happens when like you you change the format. You've changed the format on the fly. And I sorry, just something else. I just figured out that I clicked from private chat to comments. Now I can actually see people's comments. I was wondering what happened. So hi everybody. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, private chat is for us if we need to if, if you need to sort of flag anything to me. But no, the comments, we get them here. I mean what we got like fifteen people showing. People turn up it's Saturday night, it's it's on and off. But the thing is, right. what tends to happen, I usually get about twenty to thirty people in here active chatting and giving us stuff, and then the rest watch it afterwards. So when these streams are that long, you kind of have to give them the credit. So yep. Judy, kick us off before we make okay. any more mistakes. <laughs> so <laughs> So mind you this game made me almost um, want to back out on the board games world because <laughs> it was my beginning stage of playing board games. So that's why it confused me so badly that I just didn't like it. And that would be <laughs> above and below. Oh. Um, so it's published by Red Ribbon Games and um, designed by Ryan Lockett. Yeah. And the part I didn't like or didn't grasp it's the part that where there's three sections on the player board, and the three sections are ready, exhaust, and injure. And so the exhaust and the injure part, how it works, is a part of drummy bonkers because <laughs> to, to get them back, which is great game. This this game is great after second play and third and so on. But when I first time play it, and I need to bring them back from injure to exhaust and exhaust to ready. You can um, use potion to move the villager from injure to exhaust, but you use cider to move villager from injure um, to, uh, from exhaust mm. to ready. And then you can use the bed <laughs> to move them everywhere. So that's when I went, oh my God, I'm not liking this game. I forgot, I, was it actually cider? Yeah, it was there was cider and there was potion and the bed also can move them, but there's restriction on that. Maybe I should and have cut the game then. If it had cider. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cider drinker. And that's why I, I went. I'm from, oh no! I'm from, I'm from the West Country of like there you go. the UK. Anybody who lives in the UK knows that cider central. We make the best ciders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's fun. I I want to interject just for a second here. I think. I made the mistake of introducing this game to you at the wrong time. It was late at night. It was, we had a horrible day with the kids. Judy was fairly new into board gaming and I tried to introduce it and it just did not <laughs> so go over. <laughs> 
Oh, the, above and below, this is the one I don't have because I have played it, but uh -huh. I've kind of like mellowed out on it because I played it and thought I want more of that story aspect because it seemed like this is a fairly light, pleasant Euro. I was mm -hmm. quite new to Ryan Lockett's stuff, but I felt like the, the narrative stuff was a little tacked on. But then mm -hmm. when I, I think pretty much as I was playing this one, Near and Far was announced and just about yes. to come out. So mm -hmm. after I played Near and Far, it's kind of like, oh, right, why do I need a bum below? Because like Near and Far kind of got that balance right of a cool Euro with some half decent narrative bits. And now it's just getting ridiculous yeah. with Sleeping Gods and Lord knows what the new one is. Uh, was it Now or Never, I think? <laughs> yeah, Which yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I know nothing about. I'm just going to wait for it to come out and try it because <laughs> being these games, I will. But uh, yeah. yeah, that was really, that was the. Um... The timing but, but, of playing it. Well, there's that. But the and near and far and above and below, that was the talk, wasn't it? It's like, which one do you get? Which, you know, yeah. and everybody was always discussing that. And yeah. you're right. We have above and below, so we don't have near and far. No, right? we don't. Which we were going to try it out. It's still on my long list. Yeah. Like, really long, long list. list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I find incredible about those games is that, I mean, Ryan Lockhart, you know, designer, artist, publisher, like, he did everything in these Amazing. games. Which is pretty yeah. incredible. And to be honest, after the third time, not the second time, sorry, no offense, after the third time we play and I get to know this routine better, I can actually utilize how to work them yeah. better and I like it better, especially after I kick his butt. I love it even better. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> I, I think that was it. I think she she won the third game and now she loves it. So that's got to be it, right? <laughs> I just Is this going to be it one time. <laughs> Is this going to be like a theme where, like, you know, I like it better providing I got better at it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just get to more, uh, know it more. I think that yeah. that part, I like it better. Mm. The encounter card, uh, encounter book is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Luke the said. The storyline yeah. and everything. The storytelling so cool. aspect's really cool. But yeah, I love that. I've, <laughs> I've always loved that game. So that's the fifth <laughs> of my cool. games cool. that need a second chance. Fun. Hello. All right. Go, Mike. <laughs> my turn. Number five is a fairly new game. This, I think this is only on my list because we got it during COVID. So we, I haven't really had a chance to play it with groups of people, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, Isle of Cats. Okay. And I'm starting with Isle of Cats because I thought and I thought and I thought, I cannot put a finger on why I didn't like it the first time. I have no idea. Uh, every other game on this list, I have a reason why, and, mm -hmm. and I can explain it. I don't know why. I played it, and I wanted to love it. And after the first play, I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if this is for me. <laughs> I feel like it's so many talking about this game, so your expectation kind of go higher and higher every time you hear it. Maybe. And then when you play it, it's like, oh. Maybe that's it. Maybe it was hyped pretty, mm -hmm. a lot of hype to that, and it didn't quite live up to it for me. But we played, we gave it another go, and after the second, third time, and we even did a live playthrough of it mm -hmm. um, on our yeah. YouTube channel, and I love it now. I absolutely love it. I, I, I cannot put a finger on what it is. I don't know. <laughs> It's it's pretty cats. Of course, you gotta love it. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, and you know that's definitely why. Yeah, Judy I, I it. mean, I literally, I, I just want to cry when I see that one there in the center. That right? blue one there, it just looks so adorable. <laughs> I yeah. gave him a name, Bushy Tail. Yeah, it's Bushy. so cute. Well, as opposed to all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got a bushiest tail. The bushiest. Might tail. be a her. I don't know, but <laughs> the, yeah, the bushiest. <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> I oh. love them. That, um, it's a good one though. It's on my shelf down there, and I think I liked it the first time, and then like ah, subsequent times, you know, still quite liked it. Uh, the solo mm -hmm. mode I think was pretty good as well. I think that bumped up slightly because I quite mm -hmm. the solo oh. mode is very quick in this, and it's quite a nice idea that you know you it's not so much an AI, but it's more like a sequence of depending what action card flips up is what tiles they take. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but you've got a bit of hidden scoring where. There's five cards, one for each color of cats, and the yeah. opponent scores higher for certain ones than others, but you only flip one each round. So you don't know exactly which ones are, you know, weaker hmm. or better than others until further on. So you kind of kind of got to gamble a little bit. Oh, that's fine. Also, but also they can score off certain objectives as well. So you're trying to mm -hmm. like you're trying to get points without helping them do objectives because they're effectively the story is that they're trying to steal the credit. 
for what you're ah, doing. That's fine. I, I, I've never played the solo, but uh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, um, I heard a solo is good, but yeah. I just didn't look into it. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I'll play this game anytime anyone mentions it now. I really, really like it. So I don't know. <laughs> now, yeah. the, now the game is pretty solid. I've kept it as one of my Polyomno ones, even though I bought, I played this one late. Like I, I think I bought it direct off their website and just thought, okay, I've got to give this a go. It's cats and polyominoes. That should be good enough for me. Even though this was at a stage where it's like, okay, and this is happening with a lot of genres where I'm just getting sick and tired of the genre because yeah. there's like 20 million games in it and polyominoes, especially thanks to Rosenberg, <laughs> decided to get to that rather quickly. But I thought, absolutely. But I thought it's not a Rosenberg game. Maybe this will be different. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well. I Maybe spoiler, maybe not. Uh, this isn't the only polyominal game in my list. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, okay, yeah. so my number five. I can't remind myself of this. Right, big, well, oh, <laughs> speaking of Rosenberg. <laughs> stuck in your hair now <laughs> no no speaking of rosenberg it's like conveniently my fifth is actually yep. a rosenberg so oh, uh, <laughs> because on this one i got into this heavy euro okay. like it was this was more of a slow burn it was kind of like first play i don't see the hype second play there's a bit more third play it's starting to go on me but it was still only just about hitting my top 100 i thought like there's other rosenbergs i prefer mm -hmm. then i think like third and fourth play i must have got the norwegians expansion for it and then that completely mm -hmm. elevated what was feast for odin ah it, yes it because everybody and i suppose that's one thing that puts me off on the first play because if something gets hyped up beyond belief then then suddenly i'm like oh i've got to play it it's got to be the best game ever like i mean at the moment obsession is going all over the facebook yeah. groups at the moment and i bet that as soon as i play it, it's not going to live up to any of that hype because <laughs> everyone's just raving on about it but with Feast for Odin, I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I liked it, but the smorgasbord of choices you had. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fact that theme was just chucked out the window in the sense that you are trying to arrange stuff on this grid with negative points. And here's my storehouse and there's free wood and free rock and what? <laughs> and, yeah. and here's my, I've gone exploring. Now fill up this grid with tiles. It's just like, what happened to the theme? And don't get me started on feeding... <laughs> your viking uh, horizontal food rather than vertical food but <laughs> it, it just sort of like put me off a bit at first but mm -hmm. a couple of other plays i thought all right let's just accept that this is a complete abstract game basically just with a lot of choices and i think that's what won me back the fact that this game does have a lot of choices mm -hmm. all those actions there you know it's a nightmare to sort of set up and put away with all these tiles but it j I think I like that puzzle and I like the idea that I can say, right, well, this game, I'm going to go whaling. Now I'll do exploring. Now I'll build sheds. Now I'll go hunting. Now I'll just uh, collect a bunch of occupation cards. I can decide what I want to do. That always helps. But Norwegians, I think, was probably what boosted it a lot more because I needed some balancing fixed. And I mm -hmm. think Norwegians mm -hmm. did that. Mm hmm. I, I wonder if this is going to be a common theme because, I mean, I've mentioned it and you mentioned it. It's it's sometimes when a game is really hyped, mm -hmm. that could really come into place. Like, oh, I was expecting something completely different. Yeah. yeah. It, it could do, and I did consider a few that were like that, but I, I think they didn't necessarily, like, achieve the hype. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, I'm... There's not many games I can think of where I played it, didn't live up to the hype, and then suddenly mm -hmm. realized, oh, there's the hype. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, did, or at least not many that I could f think of off the top of my head. I might have mm -hmm. maybe given the game a little bit more respect in the sense, but, you know, as I mentioned, like with Obsession earlier, that's going to have to... I don't know what that's going to have to do in order to make me live up to everything I'm hearing or say. But if it's not like the best game ever, it <laughs> will disappoint me because everybody yeah. is telling me it's the best thing ever. It's just like, are you sure? I don't even like Downton Abbey. So it's, I don't, I don't know right. what I'm going to think of that one. <laughs> I, you know, I'm in the exact same boat as you. I, when I, when I kind of first came on the scene, I was like, oh, this sounds amazing. And then I kept hearing it and hearing it, hearing it. I'm like, mm. it cannot be this good. Maybe it is. <laughs> And chances are it won't. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hype, yeah. hype is a dangerous scene, and I've talked about yeah. that enough on the, the channel on, on that sense. Uh, one interesting comment I got here, actually, from uh, back to an earlier point we had, Hello Dragon, uh, was it, I find most times you play a game for the first time, it is a training game, and the second play will give more of a proper feel of how it is. Is that kind of bit like you're above and below 
uh, mm -hmm. spiel from earlier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You just uh, kind of in the training more, right? Like, ah. Well, you kind of <laughs> need to know how the mechanics equate to either points at the end or yeah. how your actions mm. will dictate how it ends. Also, sometimes you just don't know until you finish it. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I think that's that's kind of the point of some games near a second chance of play because the first time playing, you don't know who they are, what they do, right. and which who affect the other. That's right. And that's that's really important because a lot of people, no offense, but a lot of people judge if they like a game by the first play and that's it. They yeah. say, I'll never play again. It sucks. But it's like, nah. People who meet you at first time, they might not like you either, but they will like you <laughs> and keep talking to you until, you know, <laughs> until connect, right? Set into games. Yep. Uh, again, no offense. <laughs> yes, Trust me, I've got some very light-hearted people on my chat. You don't have to worry about saying no offense every time. <laughs> she I said mean, it five fair, times already. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I don't on my lot. So, so <laughs> yeah. They know what you mean. They'll probably even agree. So, yeah. <laughs> that, no, that, that kind of makes sense. And I suppose there have been a couple, like, spoiler alert, Brass does not make my list, because even though it took more plays to like it, better but we were going from it could be my six or seven maybe but it was just it it went from i detest everything about this game to i give it respect okay you know, so i still don't like it but it's okay yeah yeah I, that's the thing I, I you know i would have given it a one the first time i played it in its old form with that yellow board and that but then i played the roxley version reviewed it gave it a six now i'd probably rate it five i'd call it average you know it's just yeah. I, I can't get into that theme it's a bit it's a, it's on the mean side. It's still quite mm -hmm. long, but it's you know. But I can't deny that there is some cool stuff in it. It is well mm -hmm. produced, and if you are going to take a game that's like tailor made to be a theme, I'm not going to get into. That mm -hmm. Roxy knows how to make it appealing. I mean, it yeah. brought me back, which is saying mm -hmm. something from the first yeah. time I tried it. <laughs> no, nope, so. fair enough. That's and, and that's it exactly. I mean, I don't have mm -hmm. any games on this list that I think are better, mm -hmm. but I still mm -hmm. don't really like. So I mean that. That's not what my list was about, anyways. Yeah. 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 All right. Nah, fair enough. Let's start it off for us. Right. Four, not nine. I'll get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so back to duty. All right. Number four. Please don't attack me. <laughs> number four is Paladin of the West Kingdom. Mind you, I loved it so much now. But the first time I play it, I went, to heck, I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> so here's why. I have so many love and hate games. So at the right side of the board, uh, I find it very, uh, the worker placement is very complex. So you have to get something to do something. And there is a left side and the right side action. So it's all different. But the reason that, that, that affect me so much about this game is it's really hard to score for example <laughs> the development it costs you four dollars to bring one of the factory to the right and so you can you know require less stuff but the factory role gives you end game points and you don't get the end game points until the fifth one and the point they gave you is one point so you're basically working really hard for something because usually I'm very um, entry level, so I only get to four <laughs> of everything. So at the end, I'm getting zero, well, maybe one or two points. And it's just very, you know, discouraged. <laughs> so, so is this back to the whole thing of like the first one was a trading game? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love this game though. Like there's so many things I love about this, but just the first time when I play it, I went, oh my goodness, I'll never touch this game again. Yeah. I am glad I gave it a try because after the second, third, and fourth, I'm doing better at utilize how to work them so I can get some points. Yeah, because yeah, you want to do everything, but you can't. You kind of need to mm -hmm. focus on one thing, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you look at the first game, as like was mentioned earlier, the training, you did it perfectly, Judy, because Judy is so good at doing everything well. But Paladins <laughs> forces you to do a few things. One or two. And leave the rest. Mm -hmm. Or you don't score any points. The direction you go. Yeah. Right? So you kind of tried a little bit of everything, but like you said, you were like on the third or fourth spot of every track, which got you zero points. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely my own problem. I'm sure other people play it fine. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of the fans for it, yeah. 
Yeah, it's I love it. I, but you, I remember the first time we played it. We were about two rounds to the end, and we looked at each other and we said, "We we have no points." Yeah, that's frustrating. where are we going to get points from? <laughs> but they do come later in the game. And yes, yeah, it's a brain burner. I'll tell you that. I love that game. It's a brain burner. What this one actually went the opposite direction on the subsequent plays and that because i've oh. got i have got viscounts and architects in the other room and both of them are 10 out of 10s for me like i loved architects when i played it and i mm -hmm. loved viscounts the weird thing is people say that well if you like architects chances are you may not like viscounts you'll like viscounts if you like paladins the thing is i liked paladins a lot more when i first played it mm -hmm. and like first and second played you know like my review plays you know i thought like oh this is pretty cool it's a little puzzle there's a lot of choices eight out of ten that's i think that's what i rated it first but then it started showing the chinks in the armor like really mm. quick for me as i started realizing that wait a minute i'm just playing the exact same game every time is that like, what's going on here because you've got the different bits you can do the you know the red bit the blue bit the green bit whatever there's yeah. no theme in it but i sort of realized so what i'm doing each game is i'm deciding i'm going to do these two actions mm -hmm. and spam them because I'm going to say this action at the top here requires black, which provides blue, which I'll then spend on this one, which then provides X other color. Mm -hmm. And I'm just doing that seesaw thing throughout the whole game, just trying not to get blocked by the players. And I sort of thought, right. wait a minute, is this it? It's like, did I just, was I too generous on this? And this is mm -hmm. one of those cases where I think I should have maybe made my review of it slightly lower. Mm -hmm. Because I still will play it, but I actually sold it from the collection. Like, I thought, like, will this West Kingdom trilogy be the one that I have all three of them? And I thought, no, because I just want to play Architects and Viscounts mm. before I play Paladins. And for some reason, Paladins is the one that gets all the buzz. Like, all, everybody, if they were going to say what's their favorite of the trilogy, they'll say Paladins. So hmm. I seem to be in the minority. I, yeah. I prefer Architects. Me too. Definitely. For sure. I do love Architect. Yeah, um, we love it. This game is just, it takes more to play, that's all. Yeah. Like, now we, we do like it. Well, I do like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can I see what I can see what you're saying, how I think we're at the point, it's, it's almost like a bell curve, where it took us a few plays to figure that out, mm -hmm. and now we're up here, and I can see if we play it a few more times, it's going to come, and it's like, yeah, you're right. Oh, it's kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the paladins don't change, those actions don't change, even though the actions don't feel different. In fact, two of them, mm. I forget, that there's, you've got the walls, flip cards. You've got the vases, take them off the track. The green things, take them off the track. But I was, there's two I remember. One of them, I think, was that you had to attack these characters, and one was recruit. Yeah. Or something like <laughs> yeah. that. There was two different actions, mm -hmm. but they use the same cards. And yeah. It's the same way the act, and <clears throat> this bit up here with the black and the red buildings here yeah you, know, you put mm -hmm. a building onto that mm -hmm. it's the exact same outcome but two different actions yeah but the two actions work the exact same way you can see on the board you just take it off the track get whatever bonus below it and stick it on this track it's like well why is there two actions mm -hmm. <laughs> there the were two sets of cards thing, that yeah. had two actions the outsiders i can't remember what they were called you could either attack or recruit and yeah. then the townsfolk you could either send out on a quest or hire them or whatever yeah. it was. Is it invader? Yeah. Like Invaders, yeah. 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 And you like you had to cover up you I mean you had to do the green bits anyway, because if you didn't yeah. cover up these actions, you were gonna lose full stop. So you just basically right. had to say, right, I'm gonna pick these two this game and go that maybe that the dryness factor just went up too high for me in a sense you know mm -hmm. I, I like the i like the decision with picking the color meeples but then i'm like what's the difference with these meeples nothing they're just colors okay that's a start mm -hmm. and i like the townsfolk in every one of these west kingdom games i like mm -hmm. doing stuff with the townsfolk but i didn't find the townsfolk featured as heavily in this one as they do in the others yes like that like you can use them but you could also not pay them a huge amount of attention as long as right. you're doing everything else efficiently so mm -hmm. i suspect that's why this one gets a lot more buzz than the others you know i think a lot of the the diehard euro gamers are more interested in the efficiency puzzle over everything else so this one's kind of like all right fine let's get rid of any sense of theme or lightness or streamlining and let's just yeah. give you an efficiency puzzle <laughs> I, but, I i agree with that statement a hundred percent i think paladins when it came out it was it was like oh it's a west kingdom it's part of the trilogy but wow this one's got a lot more thinkiness to it right mm -hmm. but yeah. i love architects i love the theme i love mm -hmm. the I know we're not supposed to be talking about architects now, but we are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whatever. The same designer. I just, I loved that bit where you can capture your opponent's meeples and send them to jail yeah. and sell them. It's just, it, that's fun. I love it. 
it was a unique twist that's it if okay this is going to be a bog standard new york worker placement no oh, wait i get all my workers and i can arrest other peoples okay i'm intrigued you know yes <laughs> i need that i need that unique twist and vikings yeah. has a similar thing with the card playing now mm-hmm. this one i just mm-hmm. didn't feel had that unique twist to it i felt yeah. like you know you could t- you could make you could take out the color make it beige mm-hmm. you know it's gonna be the word of the day and you know and it could have i mean this actually felt more like a failed than mm, yeah. any of the other West Kingdom stuff. I thought like this is a failed game w- with color. So. Mm, fair <laughs> yeah, enough. I, I yeah, I agree with everything that you said. Yeah. So does this mean we'll be here in six months with a new uh, video? Another theme. <laughs> Games that we loved and now don't. <laughs> Let's go the other way. <laughs> uh, I mean, there is one of those people have been asking me to do a series on games that stood the test of time, whether that's going to be a top 10 or just occasional ones where I talk about an old game, like, say, Flashpoint Fire Rescue, the first one I ever reviewed about seven years ago or something. Oh. And it's like, how's that stood the test of time? People have asked me on that. So who knows? Maybe yeah. maybe we should just save it for a slot. <laughs> it's not like, I mean, you say six months. We can do it sooner, you know? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Speaking of Flashpoint, the only way I'll play it is if I have the Siren app on my phone. And every time I move the fire truck, funny. I have to play the Siren. But we anyway. like to explore, um, explore people when they're in the toilet. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> no offense, okay. right? So that's my number four. <laughs> and, and with that, moving on the mic. <laughs> oh. Okay, you had, uh, what was your speaking of, um, you had a segue into your last video. I've got one into mine, speaking of toilets. Um, <laughs> Baron Park. <laughs> Baron Park. Why before is Baron Park? It's got toilets. <laughs> that's a stretch. I was going to that's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and we just did this on a live stream as well, and we talked about toilets for almost the whole thing in the chat. So anyways. I still, Baron, I haven't watched that one. I need to. Uh, it's on my wish. It's on my wait list. Is it, okay. <laughs> so Baron Park for me, um, and again, it's when I played it the first time. It was just Judy and I. And we played it with two players. Mm-hmm. But the first time I played it, I thought, to me, it just it seems so scripted. It's whoever goes first is going to get the highest ranked tiles, and they're going to place them, and we're just going to carry on going down from there. And each tile gets a little bit less in value. And whoever went first is going to win by two points. And that's exactly what happened. And I thought, oh, well, there is no game in this whatsoever. But I was wrong. <laughs> yes. yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I was very wrong. And again, I didn't even think about this until that chat comment. Maybe that was just the training. Maybe that was just me figuring out how to place the tiles and learning that part of it. Hmm. As soon as that we got... Um, we didn't use the basic goal cards. We used random goals, end game goals. Um, oh, you know, right. you can get. I was going to say, uh, I thought they were always random, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, when you. Um, it does suggest three oh. for your first play, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. It's got a brilliant insert, though, you got to admit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Worst <laughs> insert in the world. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, anyway, so then we played it again, and all of a sudden, it was like, oh, well, wait a second. Judy didn't take the tile I thought she was going to take. Why? And then I started thinking, "Uh uh-oh, she's got a different strategy. And then it changed everything, and then the game completely changed after that for me. So, yeah, yeah, that's my number four. It's kind of petered out. You know, I I still really like it. It's still Mm -hmm. on the shelf collection-wise. It's just, I think I was riding a high for it for a while because it was getting played. Everybody I had it in my bag wanted to try it. And this Mm -hmm. was at the time pre-COVID when my dice cafe was like only just opening up or they were like on that ropes and so they got me to teach a bunch of entry level games i always volunteered for them you know feed me food and drink and i'll do it but <laughs> baron park was one of the games i always bought and it was one of the games that always kept flying off the shelf onto the mm-hmm. table for someone to teach it and it worked with the parents and that as well even though my mum struggles at trying to understand any of the spatial awareness stuff because <laughs> like, i'll be i'll be there waiting for about 20 minutes waiting for her to sort of constantly check every single time it's like Arr! this is why i don't teach you these little games it's like, <laughs> it's why i don't play carcassonne with her it's like <laughs> right yeah yeah judy's always I, says oh, i'm just gonna take this i'm not taking it for sure i'm just gonna see if it fits in all these places <laughs> oh, now have you got bad news bears yet no, see that's I was gonna ask you. We haven't played it with any of the expansions yet. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Well, it's only got it's only got the, it's only got the one, but I mean uh, And the monorails, right? Is that the monorails? Yeah, it's it's one expansion box, but it's got two things in it. So Oh okay. 
I mean, you've got more gold tiles, which is always good. Mm-hmm. You've got, um, and there are some interesting ones. You've got the bigger, like ten. Um, hang on, <laughs> get that, get off that screen. Right. So you've, in fact, if I put myself on solo, right. So, right. so you've got those bigger ten tiles there. Yeah. And the idea is, is that I think it's been a while since I've played the expansion because I never usually teach it with it. But you can, uh, I think you can trade in a normal point tile to mm. get a bigger one. Ah. So. You're giving up some points for a bigger tile, but if the tile wasn't worth that much, then why not? And it will fill up space. Right. So those are good. The monorail is really cool, though. I mean, you've got to... This requires you to forward plan because Mm -hmm. you've got to build the monorail statue bits on the green areas, the ones that Mm -hmm. don't score. But they've got to be at least two away because that's how they function. And then you get the point tiles a bit like the bear statues where the, the quicker you do it, the more points it's worth. Okay, mm-hmm. but because you've got to build them in this kind of right angle sequence on only green spaces, it means you've got to be really careful about where you put your green tiles. Mm-hmm. So it really does take it to the next level in terms of complexity. But I do like it. Great. Uh, one of the f- before we move on to my one though, this is yeah. a funny thing. I heard it on the Dice Tower video, and I just want to where somebody in their comments had said it. That picture there does it look like the woman has slapped that bear? <laughs> Yes, I never noticed it, and I'll never see it differently again. Uh, they said, some of the, one of their lives who said, said that the woman looks like you just slapped that bear, and the bear's like, bear, you do not do that to me again. It's like, and now every time I look at it, I can't unsee it. <laughs> I love it. it. Okay, now I like it, love it even more, just for that. That's awesome. That's incredible. I Fantastic. deserve that, Dean. Hey, Sunova, Sunova's coming. Yeah. <laughs> she oh, likes Baron Park and the expansion. Cool. Over that. Yeah. Oh, Leon nice. actually said that he had the similar, my experience to Baron Park, he had to Calico, which, mm. yeah, I could see that as well. Yeah. First yeah, place, st- anyways. Yeah, I stuck more with Baron Park than I did Calico, and I have to admit, I did have to play Calico a few more times to sort of work out where I stood with it. Mm-hmm. At the moment, I'm kind of like, meh. It, it, it's a bit too much push luck for me, but I mean, I, I can't stop staring at the cats. Right. So I know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's kind of like, even if I'm like not desperately loving the game, particularly if it's four players, I'm just like, it's cats. I want to stare at the pretty little cats. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> What's right. What's wrong yeah. with that? Nothing. Ready. <laughs> so, I number four, just trying to remember what they all are. All right. Oh, we're still on big, heavy euros, but I will okay. say that this is definitely the last of big, chunky euros. As Mine are just starting on my list, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, fair enough. We're swapping on that. But yeah. I've got... A selection of giant Lacerda games behind me here and most mm-hmm. of them I played the first time and thought okay this is I love it or whatever and it certainly was the case with the majority of them but uh, Lisboa was a slightly oh. different though because the first and this is actually the bigger this is there's two things I thought as we were talking about is it because of training is it because of hype that a game might not sit well with me here's the two reasons I can think of for me firstly conventions Playing Uh a game at a convention is not necessarily the best way to start learning the game because you're distracted. Uh, You don't know who you're playing with. It could be randoms. Uh, The table space is limited, but mainly it's just the noise and distractions. Uh Games Uh just tend to take longer at conventions. In this case, it wasn't so much a convention, it was a gathering. But the second reason I had, which applies to this, is who's teaching the game. Ah. Because this was taught to me very badly. <laughs> so, <laughs> no like, offense. <laughs> they're not going to watch this video and they won't even recognize who I was now. But oh, it was ages ago, a, a different club. The first time I'd gone there and they were nice people, you know, but it, but it was it was a bit of a distance to travel. And. I think we sat down for a four player game of this and two of them said they knew what they were doing and the two of us didn't. So I thought, okay, they'll teach us. I swear like 30 minutes later or like 40 minutes later and they're still teaching us. It's like, are you sure this needs this much in terms of rules? And it was because they were giving us the history lesson of what all the, oh, no. the game's based on. It's like, I don't need to know the stupid history lesson behind it. It's like, tell me how this game works. Right, And it, it just it just went to... I think the game must have taken over four hours and that was oh, not wow. including breaks. It was, I I thought like, I'm liking this. I, I think I'm liking this, but if it takes this long and I've got to teach history yeah. every time I play it, it's going to drive me bonkers. Yeah. So eventually I grabbed a copy because I thought, oh, come on. I like the other Lacerda games, except for Escape Plan and that. I thought, come on, got to give it a try. Maybe it was just a bad teach and I'll always put things down to a bad teach to yeah. really put me off. So I tried it, learned the rules, took a while, 
not the easiest to learn. Taught it to a friend two player at a convention, but at least I knew the guy. You know, this is actually the same bloke who likes beige euros, actually. So I knew he'd pick it up <laughs> in a flash. But and then started to like it. I thought like, okay, yeah, theme is kind of hit and miss, you know, doing this grid thing with that, but it's quite a fun grid puzzle. There's a lot of forward planning. I like this whole thing where every time you do anything, you get a bonus. So even if the bonus isn't desperately what you need, I just like being rewarded for things I do. That's why I like point salads. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That comes in handy. But I think with this, it was the uh, the clergy tiles. You know, you could get some really good combos with them. For me, though, the, the cards sold me it. You know, mm-hmm. once I got taught how to do this properly, those cards that you play in your portfolio and your board is why I like this game. Yeah. Because... Yeah, you know, as much as I struggle to see past the colors, because I know, I know, that's, I know that's thematic, <laughs> but it's like everything blends together on that picture. It's hard to tell that's, where everything is. Yeah, yeah, that that's the only mm. one reason I take it off from my list that I want to buy is mm. the art. No offense, but <laughs> it, it's, it's no beautiful. Offense. I feel like I'm offending it. Um, I, I, I don't want to offend him because it's 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 a good game, but he's the not going to watch this video. You think you know two is watching this video? <laughs> and you on. never know. <laughs> The art, it just there's so many lines and the picture is small and not easy to to mm. be visible and it's just so hard for me to look at. I feel yeah, like it, I can't concentrate on anything. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, that is, like I say, I know it's romantic and I still think it's pretty. It's like I won't say the art is bad. I just think from a graphic design perspective, it is harder to tell what's what. Yeah. And that makes it harder to teach. But yeah, you know, I, I don't. I'm not caring too much about the history side of it. It's more like oh, I like the mechanic <laughs> side of it. Yeah. Well, that, history's not my uh, like subject. I gave it up after like my eighth year of school, which in okay. U- in UK terms we've got primary and secondary school. That means after the second year of secondary school, when mm-hmm. we had the choice for GCSEs, bye bye history. Like it's really yeah. that's why I don't get into a lot of historical games. But and even you if know, you were, you don't need it at a teach in a convention, right? <laughs> no, it's like like I get it. It's based on this. I'll learn that. I'll read the reference sheet in the book another time. Tell me what these cards do, and right. I say these cards are what make the game for me. So yes, yeah. as a, you know, cinema is very glad that I did that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, it is still my fourth favorite of the lot. So I still have uh-huh. three Lacerdos I prefer, but then all of them are in my top 100. So that's not exactly a bad thing. You know, right. just, I just have to rank them somehow. Uh, and she also likes the, uh, <laughs> looks so good. So in response to your uh, art thing, like I say, it's not that it looks bad. It's just hard to tell what's what. Uh, yeah. I agree with you. I actually think it looks really pretty. I like the look a lot, but I, it's still hard to distinguish between. It, it makes it hard to to focus mm. on it. I guess is what I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kanban had the similar problem with the Stronghold version, where it was a nightmare to try and pick out where everything is. And now the new version is fantastic from a graphic design perspective. I can mm-hmm. clearly see where everything is. And it just makes Kanban now easier to teach. In fact, it's almost overlapped Gallerist, I think, if it oh. already has. Well, Gallerist used to be my favorite mm-hmm. but because it's very streamlined. It's a cool one. I like you know, the theme and that's quite cool. Yeah. But Kanban always had the better theme. It's just like, oh, God, this is a monster to teach and learn again. <laughs> the new one is kind of making it closer again. Is like they oh, are cool. really fighting for the top spot. So I like oh, it. Oh, my. <laughs> it's like it's like the 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 argument or the discussion between the two castles of burgundy editions the yeah. old beige and the new colorful one and oh right i, I thought you meant right. like castles and was it castles and tuscany the, or burgundy or whatever it is. yeah I, no I those castles of like burgundy tuscany. yeah no 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 i mean the actual just the versions of the the, the with the new bright colors um right i like the old beige version however the new bright one <laughs> is so much easier to distinguish between and see where um you can see the different dice values on each square better, and surely that's the what's only important. way. Surely the only way you can prefer a beige to color is if you're colorblind. So, I, I, as if like, it's like I can't see color anyway, so give me beige. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Hey, when you were talking at the beginning of the stream, I was thinking to myself, should I tell them I like beige games? <laughs> You, you can like beige games. I mean, there yeah. are some. There are some even I like. It's just that it's more of an in joke with me and some friends where they love a lot of these beige games, right. and I'm kind of like they all look and sort of feel the same. But there are a few. Mm-hmm. They watch. Yeah. I mean, he was he was talking recently about one called Forenza, which I've never mm-hmm. tried, and it's like when he explained the mechanics to me, it's like 
okay, that sounds pretty cool. I might actually like this one. You know, it's <laughs> it's not that I like detest all beige games. I just love the fact that I'm more thematic, color, make yeah. it look pretty, stuff like that. And whereas they couldn't care less. So mm -hmm. we're like polar opposites, but we got yeah. a lot of games that we play that are thematic or euros you know sure. and bits like that so it's, it's just it's like i say it's more of an in joke <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if this is a testament to the board gaming industry as a whole or just me mature i i don't know but i finding myself drawn to more thematic games than i used to be it yeah. could be the board gaming industry is making that more just the connection between theme and mechanics is a lot easier now it's not as pasted on i don't know but i think it's just a style of games yeah, All like right. Honey Buzz, for example. I mean, I just loved it. And I love the fact that I actually felt like a bee building a hive and that whole theme. It just, I loved it. It was great. Like yeah. Make a Pixar movie out of the bees that are on that board or so. They just look so good. Right. Ready. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Now, let's see. <laughs> we talked on That's... enough on that one. So let's get yeah. on with threes. <laughs> I'm going to get right to it. Because okay. it's no build it's... up. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tiny Town. Okay, so Tiny okay. Town, published by AEG and um, designed by Peter McPherson. I first time I played it, we had one friend over. It was before COVID, and I guess I wasn't paying attention, but <laughs> I noticed. Well, I, I like those. Um, Tetris style, and this is formed by cubes, so that's even cooler. I love it so much that way. But when we started play, I got really confused by the buildings. So, for example, right? So the farms, um, if you form a farm that feeds four cottages on the on the player board, so if you don't have farms on it, your cottage doesn't gain points. Right. And mm -hmm. Champo gets points for each cottage being fed, and the whale gets points for each cottage that's adjacent to it. Like they affect each other. So mm -hmm. not only you're thinking about how to lay them down and not block your empty spot, because that will be minus point at the end, right? But the first time play, I have to get to know those buildings and how they affect each other. Mm -hmm. That part make it really hard for me because I, I was still an entry level in board gaming world. Mm. So that took me a long time mm. to like it. But now I do like it. I love it so much. We did a um, live stream playthrough the other yeah. time. Well, I play wrong at the, fir uh, 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 at the first oh, yeah. 30 seconds because <laughs> my, um, my secret card it was for end game, but I thought it was at the beginning, so I wasted it. Yeah, she yeah. played it too early. Very ah, wrongly. Yeah. <laughs> but seems, yeah, that's Tiny Town. It seems like a recurring theme for you. It's it just seems like you just need a playthrough just to get a feel for the mechanics before you get to know the game. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with do, that. But for newer gamers, that will be a thing. I've got to do that with every family member I, I teach a game to, with the, especially the parents. I only recently uh, taught them Wingspan. And I'd been dreading mm. teaching them Wingspan because I thought this is going to be heavier than anything I've taught them. That's going to take them a few games to get used to it. And it, and it did. And I'm still having to remind them of rules, you know. I mean, bless yeah. them. They're in their early 70s. But yeah, they, yeah, but my dad's a bird fanatic. So I, was like, I can't not <laughs> teach them this. Right. But they at least, but they enjoyed it more and more as they got used to it. Even yeah. though it's not like their first game they disliked it. But they just needed that little bit of a training period. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We've actually, you know, we've discussed this a bit with our board gaming group, um, especially when the game is heavier. We thought, why not just play a round? Mm -hmm. Just play one round and then reset and start again just to get that feel. But sometimes that's a bit tedious and you have to reset everything up. And Resetting it is the problem with that. The other thing is time. Yeah. Because if, you, if you're thinking that I've got to teach and do, I mean, if you've got no problems with the time factor, then fine. That's a good way of doing it. Because mm -hmm. some people learn better from trying it out. Because I'll get to a point that if you're going to explain rule after rule to me with no reference, I don't do well in lectures. I do better in seminars. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want to be there discussing stuff with other people with the material in front of me, as opposed to sat on the bench listening to some guy drone on with a big screen. Right. So... You know, I will be one of those people that will typically say, well, OK, I'm not going to remember every single rule I've got here. I mean, this is uh, somebody teaching me, that is, because I usually do the teaching. But yeah. I'll, I'll basically be the first one to say, let's get on with it. I'll play it. I might make mistakes. What the hell? I'll do it. <laughs> it's like, it's just got to get your hands on it. Yeah, yeah hands exactly. on. Exactly. 
<clears throat> exactly. I gotta just manipulate some stuff, and because a lot of these euros will be rinse repeat with a turn sequence, it will start sinking <laughs> in, and then I'll you know I'll worry about tactics the next game because every time I get a euro, I same thing I do when I teach people and they never listen is you know you've got a bucket load of choices you can't do everything just pick yeah. one thing go with it and stick with mm -hmm. it you know it doesn't matter if you think you're going to win you know yeah. i'm going to teach converter to you you've got about 20 different things you can do in this game decide you want to get nothing but sheep do it it's just do <laughs> that's, it yeah, yeah. But, that's, but that's what i do i'll, I'll do, the first time first game i played when i got properly into board gaming like you know after all my other geekdom, but when I thought, right, I'm going to go to a board game club and find out what a modern board game is. Seven Wonders with Leaders was the first thing I got taught. Seven ah. of us, right? So I literally said, look, I've played Warhammer, Magic, and all this stuff. I can probably pick up this easy game, whatever it is. So it's like, cool. Thought like, well, this is different, but nothing too complicated, but I'll go with it. We'll see what happens. And I just decided with the leaders I got, oh, two of them like reds. Fine. I'm just going to harvest a ton of red cards. So I get them cheap and they give me points. Go with it blatted my two neighbors to high heaven and won the game at the end you know it there worked out but that was just literally look i'll pick a color and go with it because they told me there was six or seven colors and seven wonders mm -hmm. and it's like well cool let's munchkin one color and see what happens it's yeah it's it's easy for me to do that but so many people want to try and t test every factor of yeah. the game in their first game it's like well no because the whole point of a game is that you should just <laughs> you should discover stuff in subsequent plays yeah. right exactly but yeah. see that's the thing and this is an issue that i think i'm having or we're having with our group is we have so many games in our collection i have so many games my friends have so many games that i know we're going to try a game and it's probably not going to hit the table for about another year because we just have so many games we want to try yeah you're rotating right right so and just, that's the yeah. issue with that strategy so that's why we came up with the idea let's play around and then go back and try again mm -hmm. Right, oh, so that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, for the mice, um, I mean, Leon's giving his uh, top five in the list. I saw well, that, which is good for people. That, uh, how is it? Pax Premier, I'm not gonna dwell on it, but I mean, I've played it once, thought it was okay. The whole card hopping thing's a bit weird, it's not my type of theme, but it's one of those that might actually qualify for this list in the sense that maybe I just need to play it again <laughs> to see if I like it more. But uh, nope, Pax Premier is not making this list. So, Mike, what about yours? My number three. <clears throat> Self-admitted, complete user error by the person who taught it. Me. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, Judy's not teaching you. So, so you yeah, no way. <laughs> this one was actually, Judy didn't play this, this one with me. This was with another group. And it was Notre Dame. I completely, oh, I love it now. I, 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 to be fair, it's actually one of the better failed, so they actually, but you mentioned a failed. I have to go yeah. to you. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> But it, oh boy, did I mess this one up. And my friends, halfway through the game, they're saying, this doesn't make any sense. And I was like, oh, I missed a major rule. Sorry. So he packed it up, put it away, and played something else. So, <laughs> what, so, the, you, what, so you, you quit it out of shame? <laughs> because they didn't want, they, I lost my group. And they said, oh. Look, and we, play, we played King of Tokyo and Photosynthesis after that because I think everyone was so bored they got stuck in having too many drinks and they're like, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> to be so, fair, they were playing a failed game. I can totally <laughs> understand that. I think your group's very failed. I would need drinks, you know. <laughs> fair enough, Look, fair enough. Beige. Yeah, beige. Very beige. <laughs> so where, okay, where the mistake that I made was you have nine character cards that you play throughout the game. And yeah. you play three at a time. It's card drafting and all that. I won't get into all the rules. But yeah, I'm trying to remember you... it from my play. <laughs> right. So you, you play, you have three cards that you play, but you play two out of those three, and then you go and you hire one of the people. Yeah. And then you play three, hire a person, play three, hire a person, and then you move to the next round. What we were doing was play three, play three, play three, hire a person. That game so would the... have dragged on forever. <laughs> Yeah, you think? <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> so we were essentially playing it three times longer than it had to be. That's and, why you ran out of beer. Oh, and then we, yeah. <laughs> so we got out to the second round, and one of my friends was just kept putting and just collecting money and intrigue after intrigue after. And we're like, this doesn't make any sense. I just don't understand. And then I figured out what was wrong and 
yeah. you've created one of my board game hells there or something it's not yeah. enough just to say in this le- in this fifth layer you will play nothing but failed games in the next layer the sixth layer of hell is you will play all the failed games and each one will be taught wrong so- <laughs> and then each one will be three times longer than it has to be <laughs> oh, yeah but- yeah, I, 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 I gotta give Dr. Dub some credit, actually. I mean, it, out of the Felds, this is actually one of the ones I preferred. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the rats thing, whatever, and yes, it looks like a beige dog's dinner and that, but the stuff you mentioned about the cards actually was interesting. I enjoyed yeah. doing that each each round. I just wish that what you were doing with them was a bit more on the interesting side, but I enjoyed the card play of it, and I don't remember it taking that long. I mean, it uh, presumably doesn't take that long when it's taught, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think that is that's the draw for for Notre Dame is that it it's not that long. It, it's a it's a euro. It, you can play it under an hour. It's, you know, that perfect hits that sweet spot uh, with a couple players, maybe not with four players. I was going to say, yeah, not under an hour. <laughs> yeah, not with four with two players for sure. Judy and I can play it in a, yeah. just about an hour. I actually quite enjoy yeah. that game. Yeah. Surprisingly, I do understand the first play. <laughs> I was so proud of yeah. myself when I taught it properly. <laughs> Well, even when you, yeah, during the, well, I mean, you would have still understood the mechanics. You would have just been like, when's this finish? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so anyway, so so that one, that's my number three. And self-admitted, 100% my own fault. There's no other reason, but I messed it up. It, it works. I mean, that's a different reason for uh, why something needs a second play. Yeah. Alrighty. Right. We're, we are done with, I mean, I suppose there is one more coming up that could be described as heavy, but it's not like these like big euros and stuff like that. This one's a much lighter game though. And again, two reasons for this. One, the convention thing again. Yeah, playing mm-hmm. it at a convention, UK Games Expo this time. And we played it. This wasn't even at the convention. This was like at an after party. And um, Paul Grogan, mm-hmm. if you know him, uh, like does it like hosts a little thing in a hotel after certain days. And mm-hmm. so we hosted one and it's basically just the dining area of a hotel. So it's hit and miss if you can play games. Ludi Creations were there and they were showing off their brand new game, which I absolutely love because I give it a nine out of 10 and that is on the underground. Mm. But as much as I rave about this game right now, there was a problem on the first play. Firstly, Mm -hmm. like I say, conventions, you're distracted. Mm -hmm. Things are taking a while. Mm-hmm. We made the mistake, and I knew this was coming because Tom Vassell had warned me about this before and when he talks about the old version. Don't play it with more than three players. Mm-hmm. We played it with five. Oh! And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that's the old version. There. Oh, no, that is the new version. Can, I didn't think it could one. play with five. Uh, yes, it can play with five. Oh. You should never play it with more than three. <laughs> so, right. It, I mean, I love the game itself, just the idea of that lazy passenger traveling around, connect the routes. Almost, I mean, it's ticket to ride level rules. It's like the next step above ticket to ride in terms of mm-hmm. its complexity. But the amount of depth with trying to plan for that passenger and just how lovely that sort of stark white and color look is on the board. Mm-hmm. But a convention with five players meant the game took forever and the downtime was ridiculous and the chaos with the fact that I can look at the board and then four turns later of that passenger moving it's like I've traveled to a different city. It's like nothing looks the same anymore. Right. And that was a put off. But I think the main reason I gave it another chance was because I knew from Tom Vassell that, yeah, okay, does, sucks with more than three. Let's actually buy the game, try it with three or less. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then it clicked. Cause it's called like, I will only play this game free player because I think free player is good. Two player, mm-hmm. really good. Or even solo with the little mm. mini expansion. The solo game in this, which was like a mini thing that David Turksey did, is actually fantastic. There's like no upkeep in it whatsoever. All you do is build up two routes. Uh, well, actually, I might be able to get it on the screen. But have you two played this one yet? I haven't, no. Me neither. I look at, well, it's not the kind of game I see the board game store. I don't know why, but I yeah. haven't heard too much about it. Yeah. I have, but I just I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Mm. When was well, it published? One, uh, on the underground, a couple of years ago, I think. Twenty eighteen. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, twenty nineteen. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, twenty eighteen for that game, and twenty nineteen for this little bit oh, okay. on the side, I guess. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, this was a, a simple thing, but I don't know if the pictures yeah. will show it well. But you've got those two cards up there. With mm-hmm. you choose them roughly from a deck, and they're pre-built networks, so actual mm-hmm. London and Berlin networks. They're already set up. And their point marker is determined by the two cards. So one will say 15, one says 20, right, 35. There's your combo. 
And the only difference in rules is that the passenger moves twice before you have a turn again. Mm -hmm. Normally it only moves once. Okay. Right? And literally all you do is your objective is to get your point marker to overtake the others before the deck runs out. Mm. Okay. So they're still getting points for the passenger using their pre-built routes. You've got to build your routes to try and steer him away from there while also doing the red city connections on the edge and stuff like that and getting points other ways. And the difficulty can be tailored depending on what routes you pick, but it's really cool because they are actual networks, mm -hmm. but it's that puzzle of thinking. It's like, ah, oh, he's going to go across there, but hang on. If I just put something there, connect that to there, I can steal him, right? That's good. And yeah, there's a little luck involved, but there's yeah. no upkeep. Huh. You've already done it in setup. All you got to do is move the passenger twice. Right. That sounds Other great. That, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. It's so nice to have a solo variant where there still feels like player interaction. Right? Yeah. That's really cool. I like that a lot. I would yeah. probably look into this and see if... Yeah, um, we should try it. Yeah. I'd, I'd recommend it for you two, actually, because I, yeah. mm -hmm. I would imagine Mike would like it. And as I say, it's like the next step above Ticket to Ride in terms of mm -hmm. complexity or something. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to pick up the rules that quick because it's yeah. just an action point system. And it will just come down to being able to, as once you grasp how the passenger moves mm -hmm. with right. the yellow and the gray cards, you've got the game mm -hmm. in terms of rule sets. Now you've just got to decide how you're going to build your networks. And that's a whole different story. Oh, and you can flip it to London or Berlin, whichever map you want to use. Yeah. And they're going to come out with, I think, New York and Paris. They're still working on it. I don't know how long that's going to be. but <laughs> so I love, the, I love sorry. the train system games. Yeah, I think course. there is another one. Um, train games are the best. About <laughs> Japan's train systems. I'm interested in oh, that. The Jap so Japanese I'll probably, one, yeah. Yeah, I'll look into yeah. this as well. So Japanese if, one? Yeah. Do you know I, I forgot a name. <laughs> I forgot a name, but I do know they're working Metro? on it. Uh, I think so. Tokyo Metro, you had a roll-up mat. And you had to connect the trains, but you could also run to different train stations, like on foot or on a bike. It was kind of weird. Uh, I think that was it. It had like a white box. You know, it was a very stark look to it. So it could be it's on one. my list. Have so I'm going to add this one now. Oh, what is, what is the next one? Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm no, going to no, add no. this to my to buy and to, to buy check list. out this. Oh, that right, low, low, it? low list. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough for that. Uh, um, low, I... Uh, a load of Ricky. Uh, for those who don't know Ricky, I'm going to show him up now because it's funny. He runs alongside another uh, friend of mine, Lee, uh, the Dice Cafe I keep raving on about. So, oh, okay. Uh, my, my, my FLGS venue is Dice, and he's one of the ones who approached us at uh, my club and said, we're going to set this up. Took a few years, but it got up and running, <laughs> and it's now where I go like at least twice a week practically cool. and just nice. hang out there. <laughs> I've even oh, got, that's like, nice. A, I've even got a table with a uh, my plaque on it, a uh, broken movie. <laughs> so you could sponsor it as part of the Kickstarter. So it's like, oh, yeah, I'm having that. So now every time I phone up to go there, I'm like, is my table available? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I love like, that. Your, your, your special table is here, sir. Come this yeah, way. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I'm sure that's exactly how they treat you there. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not treated like royalty. I can tell you that right yeah. now. <laughs> our um, our local, our, our game store actually we just have new lockdown order, so the store part is open, but the cafe's closed. Everything's closed again. So yeah, we're we're like I mean, it's taken us ages to ease back because we've been powered on it. But seventeenth of May, we have been told that interior socializing recommences, which mm -hmm. means cafes open for the interior, which means Dice Cafe opens. So fingers crossed, that's happening. <laughs> Let's yeah. hope we're there soon. Yeah. I'm hoping so. Hoping because um, I because I know exactly where I'm going to be Monday evening after work. Uh, right <laughs> exactly make yeah. sure my table is empty and yeah. available <laughs> so we actually yeah. live on an island where we were pretty self-isolated uh, mm -hmm. it's a pretty big island but mm -hmm. yeah. unfortunately all of our rules are province based so okay. even though we're on an island the mainland is a lot worse off than we are but we have to follow the same orders yeah. right which is fine right. just yeah. you know safety measure right safety measures yeah, yeah. But yeah, I saw going back to normal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, safety first, right? Mm -hmm. um, I saw in the chat somebody had mentioned Rajas of the Ganges, and okay. that almost made my list. But how you mentioned with the game that on your number three, it was the player count that kind of made you want to replay it yeah. and then like it better. That's why I didn't put Raja on my list was because I don't think it plays well at two players. Mm -hmm. I think it needs three. Mm -hmm. 
Fair enough. And... I don't often play stuff at two, so I wouldn't have noticed that. But yeah, I've got it on the shelf down there. And yeah, I've only played it three and four, so. Yeah, so, and I think it's great, but I did not like it at two, and I played it at first with two. And then when I right. played it with three, I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. But yeah, but that's why that didn't actually make my list. Fair enough. All yeah. right, uh, that was freeze, right? Back on the twos. I like you keep Number dancing two. while it's on there. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what you're doing. So it's... <laughs> Oops, that's embarrassing. <laughs> All right, number two. Well, this is um, this is getting a lot of hype. It's Everdale. Everdale is uh, published by Ooh. Starling Games and <laughs> designed by James A. Ooh. Wilson. Can't wait for the comments on this one. <laughs> okay, don't attack me, please. Be <laughs> <So>. nice. <laughs> Everdell, I have to say the theme is beautiful. Uh, theme is good. The art is beautiful. Component quality is good. But the first time I play it, I just don't grasp the hype. Like, it's okay. For me, when I play it, I thought it's okay. But also, I think, I think now, because I'm not familiar with um, each characters, because they, they are reading part of bottom. And I have to be honest, I, I've feel difficulty on reading those small words when the cars is tiny mm. and there's so mm. many cars laying out. It, we played through this game and it took us a very long time because I took a long time reading them. Because mm. I'm quite not small fun, yeah. Very, but I love it. Like I, I'm now familiar with them because we play more. I don't even need to take too long to read it. And that's when I started liking it. Yeah. But when I just play it, first of all, the, the, the words are so small on the card. And second of all, it's overwhelmed with all the cards to read. And you have to remember what it do is the number three. So that's when I went, oh, how do people love it so much? But <laughs> now I play more, I actually getting it. I, I understand why. It's just so good, right? It's well designed, no good. You, you didn't publicize that you didn't like it before you played it the second time, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I actually like it the third time. <laughs> Not a also, second uh, time. To avoid the, the backlash from the fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't hate me. I do like it now. Yeah, but that's just uh, the, you know, as, I don't know. A lot of people are so good at playing games. When they play this game, they right away can analyze everything about it. I'm just still like searching. Okay, what is that? What is that? Yeah, this is how I feel of, you know, entry level that's... gamer. Now, this could yeah. actually be a thing because... Uh, I mean, I mentioned Wingspan earlier. The fact that everything has unique card powers was one reason I didn't want to teach my parents it because they've not had that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I thought, how are they going to absorb all these, particularly with all these different, like, funky bird powers? And this can be a thing when you are teaching games a lot. You know, if they've got to absorb all these different tactical rules, I don't find any of these games gateway level unless mm -hmm. we are talking the bare bones easy mode abilities but mm -hmm. i can't think of many like that i mean uh you know people say that, oh dominion gateway deck builder but you've still got a few of those cards with some interesting rules on it and like dale of merchants again i can't call that gateway level because you've got all the different abilities on there yeah. at a pinch i could call rune stones but even mm -hmm. then that's still got stuff having it you you are talking something as simplistic as something like star realms for mm -hmm. gateway because you don't have text all over the card it's right. just symbology but here you say there's no way that this would be gateway or even next step. I mean, it is a lightish game, but when you get all the stuff happening, 15 cards suddenly doesn't seem that difficult to get in front of you. Yeah. yeah. I think another problem is that before we had this area where we're in now, which is kind of our board gaming room slash studio, mm -hmm. we were just playing in our dining room upstairs and the table was quite big. Yeah. So the cards seemed further away, which made them a lot harder, a harder. to read. Yeah. It was quite difficult. Yeah, and this yeah. tree, man, this tree yeah. is quite unique. But I have to say the cards, it's kind of under the, the shade. It. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> under the shade. So at nighttime, when we turn the light, we cannot read it. Yeah, because you need the top. Um, the names are on the top of the card, where it's definitely under the shade and we I have to get up and actually go close or pick up the card to read what 
do I need to have to get this card? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, the just tiny the text is a little, The text is a little hard for me. I mean, I I still like it. I I joke with like the, there's the fans who absolutely adore it like crazy, and I know friends like that. I I like it fine, but I didn't mm -hmm. buy into the hype the first time I played it either. I thought like this is good, but you know how soon before you've seen every card is there you know if you start off badly you're kind of done yeah like you yeah. really need to you really need to get off the ground running with this game because otherwise you're going to spend like half of the summer season doing nothing mm -hmm. yeah that can be a put off but it's it's kind of dwindling a little bit for me on the sense because the problem is as i mentioned like if you play the base game on its own it's in that complexity level i like for a mm -hmm. game like this you know not too yeah. overwrought doesn't take forever unless you play with mm -hmm. four players and that but <laughs> But then you start seeing every single card. So for, oh, well, let's add some expansions. Pearlbrook, not that particularly interesting in an expansion. It replaces these things with monuments which are now so good you dare not build one if mm. you're trying to win. But the ocean stuff, didn't really care. It was just like, uh -huh. oh, well, there's more cards. But the problem is when you start adding more cards, you then dilute the deck so that certain things don't work as well. And obviously, when you start adding in even more expansions, the complexity goes out the window. And now it's just got so many expansions. That I'm like, OK, mm. now you're just milking a cash cow here because <laughs> I don't think it needs that many. I've not even I've only tried Pearlbrook. I want to try Spirecrest, mm -hmm. the the one with the journeys. That sounds I mean, I've got a feeling that my perfect Everdell will be Everdell, Spirecrest, nothing else. And leave mm. the rest out. Yeah, that's beauty. Yeah, yeah that's, actually, that's in beauty. your you had a live stream where you guys were talking about beautiful games. Oh, board game perspective. I was going to say, yeah, if Jody was in this chat or say, she'd be having a field day if you said, yeah. oh, what? It took you two plays to realize the genius? This is our favorite yeah. game. Oh, I, I, and I was thinking, as soon as Judy mentioned it, I was thinking about that live stream because I was in your chat and they showed yeah. the new expansion with the spiders and I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> no spider for him. <laughs> well, I say, I don't want it either. So I thought like, even though these are cutesy looking spiders, it's still spiders. But I could see myself playing that expansion just because I know I'm out uh, as long as I get to kill them. As, as, right. if, I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. if I get to take them out. But yeah, those sort of cutesy spiders I could take. You try playing something out of the Lord of the Rings LCG or some of the other games I've got. Yeah, you've, or Arkham Horror. You find a spider in there and yeah, you will run. Yeah, but exactly. The, <laughs> but, but it's only a one or two player solo co-op mm -hmm. expansion. And it's like, well, hang on. So that's not even compatible with the game. You have right. to play that as a separate thing. And then these aren't compatible with this. And it's like, you have now just created so many expansions that there is no point owning all of them. Right. Despite yeah. how good that Kickstarter value was. It's like, I thought, shall I get it? Shall I don't? But it's like, I'm not going to use half this content. What do I care? Why bother? Yeah. yeah. You know, you mentioned earlier about Everdell and some of the expansions and diluting the deck, and, 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 and that is an issue. We mm -hmm. actually found that even with the base game and only two players, you didn't see enough of the cards. Yeah. yeah okay. So we found on BGG, somebody had, it's just like a user made variant. Yeah. Variant. That is so cool. I and love it. With two players, mm -hmm. there is. Um, the cards that you put out beside the meadow for the different actions, there's an empty spot, mm -hmm. right? You only put yeah. out three out of the four spots. You use that as, a, it's called the border. Mm -hmm. So every time you take a card from the meadow, you put a card from the deck there as well. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard of this actually, or somebody said like it was another way to jig like jiggle around yeah. with the meadow or something. Yeah, I've heard of people doing exactly, this. Exactly, but those cards get covered up if you don't get them quick enough. And yeah. it actually mm -hmm. really improved the two player experience. We we use that yes. yeah. variant um, on our live stream playthrough. Yeah. And I love it because at one point, one of the cards I really needed, but because he took the card from the middle, so he he flipped the card and covered it, and now I couldn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of waiting and waiting, and when that card was gone, I get it right away to, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I think it's great for two players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. I haven't played it enough with uh, two players in that sense, but no, that, that could work yeah that could work uh we got a little uh, shout of it i'm a subscriber to the nerd shelves due to a shout out from luga a long while ago love the support you give each other do not spoil is tapestry up there on the nerd shelves on your list we shall <laughs> we shall find out we'll see whether they can keep a straight face on the subject kevin but, uh... must be um watching our show for a bit <laughs> maybe maybe so we mentioned something in we one of know. our so, but thanks kevin that's really nice but Thank um you. not nice enough for me to spoil <laughs> <laughs> But Should nice enough for you to at least go to number two. So, <laughs> okay, is, right. it, is it my number two? Yes, it is. Yes, my number two is tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> what are the yeah. What are the chance for the timing? Eh? It didn't take long. <laughs> 
Are you sure awesome. like, you're, like, you're not in a private chat with him, are you? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. My Click phone's it. even off. Are you talking He's about tapestry yet? <laughs> but honestly, so my number two is tapestry. Yeah. And I, so uh, Jamie Stagmar actually sent us this game for a review copy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when I tried I'll give, it. I'll, I'll give credit to him, actually. He's one of the few publishers out there who, like me, is taking this initiative with smaller creators. And it's like, yeah. he's going for a bit of a wide mix, like some big, some small. So he's not quite as fixated on the small as I am. But it's like, finally, a publisher who actually gets it to a point. So oh. yeah, credit mm-hmm. to him. He's been he's been great he he he's a great communicator he always yeah. emails straight away he's super supportive lots of respect for this yeah designer slash publisher absolutely amazing yeah mm. um so tapestry there are a couple reasons why i didn't enjoy it the first time and <laughs> bigger 10 but all right <laughs> <laughs> um this one's polarizing for a lot of people. I can imagine yes. there's more than one reason why it wouldn't sit well with people. <laughs> okay, let, let me say there's a couple of reasons why I like it more now than I did. Okay. One of the reasons is the rule book. Um, yeah, I think I, I appreciate that they were trying to streamline everything, but they seem to leave a lot out of the rule book. There were no examples. Mm. There were no specific situations. So when I was learning it, I was on BGG constantly trying to figure out, well, what, what does this mean? What does this mean? And that made it difficult for me in my first play. So mm. Streamlined it to the point of actually removing useful content. <laughs> so exactly. Like, on, we need to know how to play these things. I mean, the FAQ is ridiculous for this game. Exactly. That was the main, I think, the main reason. And then with that, just trying to work through the mechanics through the first game, but always having to check my phone, check BGG, check this. It just... Didn't sit well. It didn't sit well. But we gave it another go mm-hmm. and enjoyed it much more the second time when we realized the different possibilities on the different tracks and there was more to it than we first thought. So, it yeah, yeah it definitely took me to get past that rule book. <laughs> it was... So at, that, it, so at that point, you when you had the game, you'd learned it, you knew the rules on the second time then? Yeah. 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 Exactly. We actually played the second time right the next day. Yeah early in shine and we just decide you know what let's sit down and do it again and right away we went oh actually okay that actually worked and it's very different than the first time yeah. we play i mean mm. if i can even understand <laughs> then that is good <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's i mean there's, there's a lot of that rule book i mean yeah, you got like all this text all over the individual boards and it's still requires an FAQ and it's like you think with that much space you could explain how this thing works <laughs> exactly yeah I, I I think that was the biggest part for me was I couldn't figure out why so much was left out I, I said I was more upset than anything like couldn't you have just made a, two more pages like, in the rule book it's like we've stripped out rules we've stripped out theme we've stripped out all sorts of stuff is like what else could we strip out of this it's like wow but leave room for these overproduced buildings which I do right. love I will admit but it's just like, yeah yeah, yeah. This one, lovely game. I, I have to admit, I've because I know you both like uh, tapestry or that from from your from your videos and that. So I wasn't quite sure that this one would be like a second play <laughs> worthy one. I figured this would be like, oh, you liked it first time, no, no problem. I it took me a while to figure out where I sat with this, and I think in the end, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I gave it plenty of tries because I mm-hmm. wanted to discover if I was missing something. But yeah, the the fact that it just wasn't a Civ game was a slight put off at first. I had sort of expectations a bit too high as to, uh, oh, this could be a nice streamlined Civ game. Oh, wait, no, it ain't. <laughs> like, this right. Is like, this is leveling up tracks, you know, which mm-hmm. is like yeah. the foremost of Beige Euros <laughs> is, a, <laughs> is a track. Yeah. But with this one, I think the uh, the balance factor, I think, just completely like took me out of it or sorry. I mean the fact yeah. any game where you have to release a full errata rebalancing most of the cards and abilities in the game like a week after it releases, that doesn't bode well for how the design of the game went. Because yes. that sort of stuff should be ironed out a little bit earlier. And there's still yep. stuff in there that I find insanely like bad on the bat. I mean I hate this die. The science die because that could be so good for you it could be complete waste of time yeah. mm-hmm. and it's not like you can make up for that you know you kind of need to get a move on yeah and yeah the, the because of that i've like, never yeah. taken the science track because of that that big die on the very first spot i've just never gone that direction <laughs> because of it yeah yeah the, these i didn't mind too much but again it was quite abstracted i think the tapestry card thing was what 
sort of got on my way because it's called tapestry so i thought all oh, these cards are going to be a big deal playing them each age they'll build up you play three in the whole yeah. game and they are like widely imbalanced i thought oh what are these cool buildings it's like you're putting them on the grid to cover up spots or something it's like what <laughs> so, it was like what is going on here so it's it's it's, yeah. it's a weird a weird game but it's that surprisingly was... got a lot of really big fans i mean well yeah. sure absolutely i mean i can see why i mean mm -hmm. we enjoy it a lot but that mm. talking about those buildings that was bizarre for me this overproduction of huge beautiful buildings that like you said they just cover up a couple of spots on your sideboard you would expect something yeah. produced like that it would be more implemented in the game right yeah and then you've just got yeah. this which is just like a few little pillars and some very yeah. basic artwork it's just like well why not take something out of the buildings you know or make the buildings more use i don't know they say it, yeah. it didn't sit well with me after i was done with it but i mean this is a polarizing one you either love it or you hate it yep. i don't think you can be in the in the middle and i think hate's a strong word I, I, I think it needs to sort of it needs a second edition with some sort of balancing and mm -hmm. tweaks and mm -hmm. that but I, I wouldn't say i hated it i just thought like yeah there's i, I think i'd come off like viticulture and scythe for like loving games and then suddenly yeah. this one came out as like oh yeah <laughs> and then yeah. came out and it's like oh no stonemire what are you doing it's like <laughs> yeah isn't it interesting though i find with i mean i am just going to use tapestry and scythe but i'll add all of stonemire in this but i find his games polarizing because i think like what you said it's not as much of a civ game as i wanted it to be and a lot of yeah. people with scythe they're like it's not as much of a combat game as I, it's got mechs i want combat yeah there is no combat well there is but it's it's, it's more deterministic minor yeah i mean it's exactly it's, uh, yeah yeah so i've had the same problem i mean i knew it was a hybrid and i thought like right well i don't need it to be a full combat game mm -hmm. i like i like the efficiency puzzle in it and i thought it's quite a nice blend of everything and scythe mm -hmm. just sung to me like i, I, I really love, love scythe but yeah with this one i think maybe my expectations were just a little bit skewed you know i thought mm -hmm. like it was going to be this type of game and it wasn't but then i couldn't it couldn't reel me into like no no i'm this type of game come back and it's like nah yeah, it's yeah. Like, i couldn't i couldn't be convinced uh back uh i'm told your subscriber counts now at 969 969 so we're getting a few come on we're Yay, 31 people that there's 41 we'll people <laughs> there's 41 people i'm seeing that apparently are watching this also get at this point <laughs> all of those people need to subscribe to it right now uh, right. <laughs> that would work yeah. um the other cool. in interesting question that had come up, uh, well, humorous bit that beige, right? That's 18 now, okay? It's, 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 it's keeping count of how many times to say the word beige, it's, which would be great. But this is an interesting one from Dice of Cards. It begs the question, would most games heavy on iconography get better on subsequent plays? Hmm. Maybe. Um... I mean, we're going back to this whole thing that we've had this theme of the first games, the training video, like the training one, or like, as you were saying, Judy, like reading too much text on Everdell cards was a put off. Now, uh -huh. you know, if that had iconography rather than all the text or like more iconography, would that have made things better on subsequent plays? Or I mean, as, I mean but then Everdell got better for you even with the text. Yeah, it's, it's well, again, it's my personal problem on that to be honest, because I feel like mm. when he's the rule book reader, because I can't, I feel like I can't concentrate on that. Mm. And who knows, there might be some game later we talk about because of that reason. <laughs> um, so I, I just have problem with it because it's small, but if it's only icon, that's saying you're gonna hold on to the player eight sheet mm. and yeah. it's distracting you from playing the game. So I actually will prefer it the way it is in Everdell. I mm. just need to play more to get used to that. Like I say, the first time I play, I went, what is going on? But <laughs> after I play more time, I don't even need to look at it. Yeah. I know which card you need and what they do and who they affect with each other. And I think that's that's yeah. that's kind of the key to some games, right? Yeah. They need that. I yeah, think it Sorry. comes down to your learning style, I think, because I learn better yeah. with iconography than I do text, but then that doesn't mean I can't read the text there, but yeah, iconography would, I wouldn't necessarily need the second play because on the first play I'd get it with iconography, but then I yes. know people who I can't teach a rule book to them. They have to read it themselves. And even then they prefer to have the words on the card. Right. So I think that's just going to be personal preference. Yeah. I, I, what you, I was going to say the exact same thing. I think it's the opposite actually with more iconography. I don't think it needs a second play. I would get it on the first play more. 
Mm-hmm. Right? If with the text, yeah. that's when you need yeah. the subsequent plays, I think. Yeah. For me, personally. It depends how much iconography there is. I've raved crazy about Whistle Mountain on the previous video. And you, know, you want to look at reference sheets for iconography. That thing has got a ton of them. <laughs> but it's all laid out. If I can't recognize an icon, they're pretty intuitive. But if there's one I don't get, it's just like, oh, yeah, cool. And yeah. then I know it. You know, mm-hmm. Whereas the text, you could interpret a word, a line of text differently. True. And I have had... Mm-hmm. Like my first impressions of Sleeping Gods, I need to apologize for that podcast I did before because my first impressions were not great on Sleeping Gods because of the yeah. combat, <laughs> all because I misinterpreted certain words in that not brilliant rule book. You mm-hmm. know, but because I misinterpreted it, it completely destroyed the game for me. Uh, yeah. So once yeah. I got told, no, this is how it works, it's like Oh, and now I'm on my shelf. So it makes a difference. Now, right? <laughs> yeah. It definitely happened to oh. us a couple of times that we read it wrong. And we went, oh, that's that's dumb. <laughs> but then after he got used to it and yeah. got it right, that yeah. game just got so much better. Yeah. yeah, it happened to us so many times. Yeah, when you finally yeah. hear the real the real rule, you oh yeah, yeah and it's like okay, it's fixed. I know, but I can't exactly go back and redo the podcast, so it just has to be yeah. like that. Yeah, ah, well. exactly. Right. All right, number two on my set. Yes, I got the number two. So this one, funny, UK Games Expo is featuring again. This was another, a same, actually same, different year, same event. Paul mm. Grogan's little event thing. But this one, I played it and thought, I think it's good. I couldn't quite mm-hmm. tell. And this was based on a theme that I'm like, okay, I shouldn't go anywhere near this kind of theme. It's like, seriously, Luke, what are you doing? But I didn't play it for a good, what, like two, three years since? But it kept suggest it kept like calling out to me like he's like i remember that game i think it was good <laughs> i couldn't tell but everything wanted me to try it but i couldn't find a copy of it that is in the uk then found it second hand a little overpriced but i thought let's just go for a, a gamble on this one and i'm glad because despite being technically about trains i mentioned <laughs> yeah. whistle mountain whistle stop mm. definitely just needed that second play that time when i bought the second hand copy put it on the table and then third play, bought the Rocky Mode expand, Rock, Rocky Mode, Rocky Roads expansion, yep. put that in. Now I won't take it out. And this one has just shot up in terms of my liking for it. And it's like, hmm. okay, this is about trains. What, you know, why am I even going anywhere near this? But. Oh, you don't like got... train games. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. So... <laughs> but it's even got shares in it in a sense, you know, but it's yeah. a set collection. So it's not like the okay. stock market things. That's the. It's those 80XX stuff that I really hate when it comes to the trains. But mm. with me, it's just trains aren't that interesting to me as a concept. You know, I don't mm-hmm. like them in real life. I don't really care for them in games. And when they go into the heavy company dividend investment stock market, thing, it's like I feel like I'm at work again. Right. This is not what I need. I'm an accountant already. I don't need the game to be based on this sort of thing. So it's just <laughs> they, they <clears throat> sorry, they put me off in that respect. But whistle stop is more about the route connection. Mm-hmm. So okay. it brings me back to a kind of ticket to ride, metro to Suro type thing. And that's what a lot of this is. So with the basic cons of the whistle stop being, it used, if I try and get a bigger side of the board, here we go. Um, you start off on one side of the board up this end. Mm-hmm. None of this is revealed yet apart from the center, which could be different variety. And again, something this has lots of variety with setups mm-hmm. and that. Um, different places you can go, which trigger, get points, get the shares for set collection or do other things. But... You lay out a tile each round, and the tiles are all like this Tesoro style, like weavy, wondrous thing. Like you create this re- the insane map, but you go to the different spots, get the resources, use them on the various cards, or try and get to the end as very as quick as possible and trade them in. You can play it how you like. There's especially with that Rocky Mode, uh, ro- Rocky Mode. Why do I keep saying Rocky Mode? <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Road expansion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Rocky Mountains one, I think, is actually probably yeah. called. Uh, you know, expands it a little bit. You've got even more. You can do, like, a few more strategies. But this one, I have to admit, I think it's just that it's very streamlined. Rules mm-hmm. are very simple in it, but there's a lot of depth. But I love how everybody's got, like, about, like, like there's eight trains along the side here belonging to all the players. And as these tiles get built, the map is just, like, going all over the shop. You know, it's like, yeah. I could go this way. Well, hang on. If I put this one down, I can go straight across to that place there. You have to go around. Sucks to be you. It's because you are obviously getting in each other's way. Mm-hmm. It it just kind of worked well. But yeah. the second play required it was a, this was like the longest gap, I think, between having played it the once 
and then mm-hmm. getting that second play. Yeah. Because the first time I played it, I didn't know if I liked it or not, but I just kept having the memory of it. And mm-hmm. it was on that list of, I got to yeah. try this one. Let me have a Ooh. think. Maybe it'll work in that. And it's like, right, second hand copy. Let's just get it. And it's like, oh, yeah, why didn't I come to this sooner? Yeah. <laughs> so there was something there that spoke to you. It just stuck with you for a couple yeah. of years where you just kept thinking, hmm, I've got to get back. Even. Oh, yeah. Like this, wow. this, this must have been at least the year before the On the Underground year. So, so this must have been easily like 2017, 18 or something time. Wow. And I didn't grab a second hand copy of this until. Uh, last year yeah it oh, last wow. year during the lockdown yeah last year when lockdown had eased and i could have mm. people out of, so this must have been summer last year i think mm-hmm. when i finally got it acquired and now it's like permanently on the shelf with the other with whistle mountain yeah. <laughs> so that's already yeah. a start and it's just gotten better and better the more i play i mean just look mm. at that map you know you can see yeah. that you know you start off at this end and if you're over here you're going to be going to lots of different stops but then if you're over this end you could go like across the board really quick to the end there's right. all sorts of ways it work. and it's trains but it could be taxis it could be airplanes for all i care you yeah know, right. it doesn't it doesn't matter so much that they are mm-hmm. trains yeah. but at the end of the day it's about making the routes i don't need right. a loan or a check or like some other weird thing that like <laughs> age of steam and all that lot do to to lay the track down i just want it to be like ticket to ride level styles where it's like here's my card here's my tile there's the track done <laughs> yeah nice. yeah yeah like I said, it doesn't have to be trained does it you're not focused on the the vehicle itself you're focused on the the track mm-hmm. yeah fun yeah, it, looks it, great it, it, i was gonna say I don't, I don't think that many people have played it in a while because it hasn't had as much buzz Mm -hmm. since it came out and now it's kind of like oh some people know of it or like me you kind of just go i know i just need to revisit that one again yeah lots of good games now if train connections are your thing it's definitely one worth checking out just don't go into it thinking it's a (laughs) a heavy train game of that caliber because for starters i like it so it's not going to be like that (laughs) But people will be disappointed if they think, oh, it's got shares in it, has it? And it's like, yeah, it's set collection, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like, it's Ticket to Ride Pennsylvania set collection of right, shares, right. okay? It's not, it's nothing else. It's like, oh, I've got more than you, I get more points. Great, you know, that's fine. <laughs> Again, right. you could be collecting cabbages for all that matters. It makes no difference. <laughs> <laughs> collecting cabbages? Huh. That's yeah, a game that, I play. That, uh, that'll probably come out with like, the Avatar uh, Last Airbender theme or something. Like, <laughs> anybody who's watched that show knows exactly what I'm on yeah. about with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're confused. But just, was it my cabbages? No, I'm not going to say it. But I say any Avatar fan will know what I'm on about. <laughs> so, otherwise, no. If you haven't watched the series, go watch it, though. It's fantastic. Yeah. Have not. Have not. Yeah, get over uh, after this. <laughs> yeah. Add that, add that to your list of TV to watch. There, to go there you go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Number ones. All right. All right. Number one. This. I do not even need this board. It is <laughs> we, are the only game. Are we crossing over game. is what I'm wondering, actually. <laughs> yeah. This game is the only game that I first time tried to read a rule book before Michael. And that's the only game that made me cry at night time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I feel so dumb because I cannot read it. <laughs> now, which which game made me cry, or at least made me want to cry? Uh, food Chain Magnate! Don't, do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I like it now, now that we figure out what is going on. Yeah. So it is Night Market. It's published by Talent Strikes Studios. Night Market? Yeah. Yes, and it's um, okay. designed by Adam Swine. It's pretty new. It just I, came out on Kickstarter. Yeah, um, so okay. we... We actually contact, um, well, this game is based in night market culture in Taiwan, and that's where I'm from. So yeah. when I saw this game, I went, oh my God, I have to get a hold with them, and I need to find out what's going on, because <laughs> I do want to introduce to the board game group in Taiwan. That's a lovely right? cover. That's exactly what it looked like in Taiwan, except for the simplified Chinese. <laughs> Some of them I can recognize, but anyway, so... <laughs> I got this game and it's about Taiwan. It's about name market, which I love the most. And it's about food. Don't mess Last with point. me when it comes to food. I <laughs> food. love food. Yeah. So I contact them and I got the game and we even have um, Michael surprise me in one of our videos that, oh, this arrived and like almost got me in tears because I was homesick for a while. So 
as you can imagine, how fast I get to open this and open the rule book. And after the second page, I went, oh, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Why do I do this one? But that one is not coming. It's just not making any sense. But so this would be like the crushing need of like, I wanted this to be good. <laughs> yes. And because of the expectation I have, I want to be able to read it because I want to, you know, I'm never a rule book reader. So I want to get it done. So Mind you, we actually got prototype, right? So yeah. I don't know if they change it after Kickstarter. A few things changed. We did have the prototype, so there yeah. were a few things that made it a bit more confusing. Yeah. Is so it actually released yet? It's founded in Kickstarter. I think yes, they do. I think they, they just they just funded in Kickstarter. Yeah, just right. So, so it, later this yeah. year. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you guys can check it out later. But so while I was trying to figure out this game, I couldn't. So I kind of wipe away my tear and bring it to Michael and say, hey, <laughs> this looks very interesting. You want to check it out <laughs> while I take a break? So he read it and he went, oh, what the heck does that mean? So <laughs> I felt so much better right there because really? I'm not, you know, not smart enough. So Kickstarter it, it, rule book's always a bit of a minefield. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of, yeah, it's hard. So yeah. I feel better because yeah. it's not just me not understand. Yeah. So Was we it? actually... Was that her exact words when she came to you with the, the rule book or something? It's like, hey, you know, how about try this or something? Or was it more a kind of, please? <laughs> please <don't." laughs> I tried to play cool. Like, it is interesting. You should check it out. Check it out. Yeah, it was a little out. bit of both. <laughs> I, it's, I have to admit, I mean, I can't tell if I like it or not from the mechanics because I can't tell exactly what's going on. I'll have to look it up. But I mean, it looks pretty. And it's a different theme. That cover sold me instantly to... Like, if I saw this at Essen, mm -hmm. like, passing by, I wouldn't have recognized the designer or the publisher or anything like that. But I would have gone, hmm, eh, let's have a look here. <laughs> it's good. It is. It's really good. Consider a Euro game. And yeah. there are a lot of things going on. A lot, yeah. So I think that's part of the reason why it frustrated me so much when I'm reading it. Because I, I don't mind the things that's going on. But the thing is, it's mm. not clear when I point out stuff. But they're just trying to put it together, right? Prototype. So yeah. we communicate with the publisher a couple times back and forth. And I even brought it to the cabin. <laughs> I think I ruined everyone's vacation. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was so into this, like, I was able to do this. Yeah. So at the end of um, the, 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 the trying, we actually figure out by, you know, getting all the information from the publisher. So we did a three things we love about this game and I feel so much better because mm -hmm. that's when I went, oh, what is going on? It's actually quite simple. Why do we make it so complicated? But yeah, it's just the rule book ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a good game. It is fantastic, but we actually set it up, started playing twice and put it away twice because we could not get through. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this, once, this is yeah. an interesting thing because I'd never heard of this. I don't right. pay too much attention to Kickstarter. I hadn't seen like Dice Crowd crowdfunding mention it or anything like that. So it's like it just completely slipped away. So when you said it, I wasn't even sure if I was going to spell it right. I thought like, what on earth is this game? Mm. I'm, interestingly, I'm looking on your channel at the moment, like your free things we love, like playlist of that. And I'm looking at the views on like some of the videos. It's one of your most popular ones in that playlist, the Night Market. So it is. But you must that's have had some people from Kickstarter that were really wanting to know more about this game. Um, they actually ended up... So, okay. <clears throat> Let's step back a couple steps here. So, <laughs> I lived in Taiwan for 13 years. Judy's from yeah. Taiwan. So, yeah. this game had an emotional draw to us. Um, my dad, before he passed away, his last big trip was to come see me. We spent all these time in these night markets that are actually featured in the game. Like it was very yeah. emotional for us. Yeah, you had a sentimental connection to it. Very yeah. sentimental. So I think that came through in our Three Things We Love video. So um, they actually featured that video on the Kickstarter Kickstarter page. So I think that's right. why it got a lot of views. 
but then even then, I mean, it would have been yeah. a game that no one would have heard of, and it's kind of like, right. hmm, this is different. Let's check yeah, it out. Yeah, but... I was not gonna put this on the list because it was so new, but this is the only game that made me want to cry. Yeah. So I kind of no. have to, because <laughs> now yeah. I love it. We figure out, and it's actually simple. Yeah, I don't know why it frustrated us. <laughs> newness does the newness doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it was a second yeah. play, so <laughs> it doesn't matter if it was like last week. It was still a second play, and it obviously was a big change. Yeah, especially uh, so when. I given your connections you had such a your own personal hype for this game like you wanted mm -hmm. this to work because you didn't want something that connected to you so well to yeah. be a disappointment yeah that's exactly. that's the thing right so we didn't like it for the second play third play until fourth play <laughs> yeah yeah i i have to say we judy and i discussed this we pr actually probably gave it more plays than we would have if it was a different game yeah. I think we would have given up after about our third play. Yeah. yeah but, but we that, wanted that, it. But I say, it, you wanted it to be good and yeah. you gave it. I mean, I, I did the same with like Brass before. It's not like I desperately wanted it to be good, but I thought, like, come on, everybody goes on about it. I'm going to give it a, a few tries. And there have been some games where it's like, okay, this is a theme that should work for me. Please work. You know, even mm -hmm. Tapestry to some extent, you know, I thought, like, come on, I wanted it to be this type of game. Maybe I'm missing something. And so it gets a few more it's, it's fine to be forgiving of it as long as one as long as you reach a consensus you know at yeah. some point when you're done with it it's like okay we've decided love hate whatever yeah, yeah definitely yeah. and you know that could have been on my list too because i feel exactly the same as you do actually yeah yeah, yeah i think it's fantastic <laughs> share some <I'm>, tears <laughs> That, I'm going to have to look that one up. I say knew nothing about it before, but I'm going to have to keep an eye on that when it releases retail, assuming that we get distribution over here or so. Or maybe I'll see it at a convention yeah, later on. Yeah, please do but try no, it. I'll yeah, have a look because really theme, cool. theme and cover has sold me. So yeah. you know, that's definitely one I want to test out. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Your number one. My number one is... this. The reason why this is number one is because I think this is the biggest gap from hate to love with a one play, mm -hmm. one extra play. <laughs> Power Grid. Oh. I played Power That's Grid. That's the end of the stream, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I see your face. Uh, don't like Power Grid? <laughs> you, you first. <laughs> okay, so I played Power Grid because my best friend, who's also part of my board game group, it's his favorite game of all time, and he wants everyone to play it all the time. <laughs> and no one will. <laughs> so we played it one day, and there's a lot of upkeep in the game. So he kind of designated little bits of upkeep for each of us to, to do the housekeeping. But there was so much going on, and we're trying to learn the rules, that I had no idea what was going on. I just could not figure out my end game. I could not, I felt like I wasn't doing anything that I wanted to do. By the end of it, I even made a couple mistakes in my upkeep and it kind of ruined the game a little bit again. It, it does. <laughs> right? Um, and I think I was in charge of counting um, cities that people had and I miscounted one. And I, by the end, I was just, I, I never wanted to play it again. I just did not want to play it again. About a year later, we went to his house. He didn't tell us what game we were going to play. I thought something was suspicious because he wouldn't tell us what we're playing that night. No, you tell I... me what we're playing. I'm not getting surprises <laughs> like that. They don't end well. No. And I walked in the door and Power Grid was on the table and I was, oh no. <laughs> Here we... Start and... a car. <laughs> yeah. I actually loved it the second time. I, I really, really enjoyed it the second time. It's not what, my favorite the... game. What in the name of all that's holy changed? <laughs> I, I don't, I simply, I, I think I realized that I, I was overthinking everything and I thought the game, there was way more going on than there, there actually was. And I really just simplified my strategy and I went through it and just enjoyed it. And I actually had, I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was just that first play well, I is, did. I, there, is a, there is a fair amount going on to it. I mean, I've never denied it's not a heavy game. Right. No, not the mechanics in the game itself, but I just think the strategy you need to build your engine and to to accomplish something. I mean, I don't care if I win or lose games, but I want that feeling of accomplishment. I want that feeling of, oh, I built an engine that's working and it's efficient and, you know, the yeah, bonuses you, you get. Yeah. 
None of that in the first game. I was just going turn to turn. Be like, I, I guess I'll do this. I don't know. <laughs> and it was awful. It was a bit, bit like that the first time. Yeah, but I mean, it, it took a while to even get used to it. I, oh, I could. Well, carry on. Let's get yours bits done first. <laughs> well, I mean, that's basically it. By the second time. And I also, the other part was when we all walked to the door and said, we don't want to play this game. My friend said, I will take care of all the housekeeping. You guys mm. just enjoy yourself and we'll play it. And, I, and that helped a little bit where we could just yeah. play the game, right? Did he also yeah, run out of beer? <laughs> no, and he stocked the fridge full of beer, which was nice. I was going to say, that, that helps. I mean, I feel like I would need plenty of that. <laughs> yeah. um, to be fair, I haven't played it again since that day. So I've actually only played it twice. Right. <laughs> but so, the, so, it, so it needed a second play for you to start liking it. And then maybe, maybe you'll... You hated it at first, then you loved it. Maybe the third play will balance it in the middle. Maybe it'll <laughs> just be okay. But I just, I felt like after we left, I had that feel. You know that feeling after a really good game where you built an engine, you just feel like you covered yourself in a warm blanket. Just that, oh, it just feels so satisfying. That's hmm. what I had at the end of this game. Yeah. As well as well as a brain hemorrhage. <laughs> <laughs> Try to count the, the maths in this. I mean, I'm an accountant and even I find the maths in this ridiculous. Impossible. It with with my thing I mean we'll put it put it this way. The rating I've given this game is a two. Like I Wow. I know the person you described as wants everybody to play it. I know the person you're talking about. He exists in a club. I have met him in my area, in a club I don't go to anymore because they they play a lot of the Euros. I'm not a fan of, okay. but, but he has power grid and a bunch of these train games and that, and he always wants power grid on the table. So it's mm. like on all the time, five or six players, so three hours later and it's done. And that was like, I think the first main times I got introduced to it and win or lose. I can't remember if I did win or not, but the, every time I tried this game, I just could not get into it. The, the, the one redeeming feature, like that one point I give it is that resource market. Mm, I, I love quite it. like that. I yeah. like that bit. Okay, fine. That chops and changes, but then that's a very general thing you see every day now. Yeah. He's this person has got the right idea by putting these little bespoke non-entry signs on here. Every mm -hmm. time I've seen this game played with less than six players, people are putting tissue paper on these countries. And I'm sorry, <laughs> any game that forces you to put paper on your board to cover up a bit <laughs> is fail because I've lost track of how many times I or someone else has forgotten that you can't yeah. go into a certain country. That is really annoying. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it, it, with this, I think it was just like the, the auctions are my problem. They're not my, it's not my favorite mechanic generally, auctions. Mm -hmm. I like quick bidding. I love Biblios. So I like the quick, like two, Ooh. three, four, done. Two, yeah. three, done. Five, six, done. High society could be a similar deal. This one, though, the auctions start at like 26, 33 or so. And then it could be about 15 minutes later before the auction finishes at 176. <laughs> you know, as everybody is like going on to these ridiculous numbers. But then it's usually a minute between somebody saying if they want to bid higher, because as soon as somebody outbids them, they've then got to recalculate, can they afford it? Can they deal with the market? And oh, have they connected up the, because it's not like they're 5, 10, 15, they're, they're all sorts yeah. of weird numbers. So everybody is just holding the game up, trying to calculate their next move. And I'm just sitting there going, get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's a really good point, but yeah. and I think that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much is because our group, we're pretty conscious of that, and mm. it's the same four of us, and we play all the time together, and we're not, we won't take 15 minutes for something like that. It's like, what? okay, yeah. fine, we'll just carry on, and that really helps the game move along. Yeah. Right. It, um, it does need to be well, These were quite serious players, so they always like, were getting into it, but then I know a lot of people that will still take a while with it but i guess mm -hmm. we might not have, i sort of thought like oh this is going to be about getting different power stations that but it realizing that it was less about the whole power generation thing and more just about economics yeah you know a genre i'm not as big on because games for me are escapism and making a game based on my day job is not something i desperately Fair need enough. for escapism yeah. yeah so it just didn't sit well and everybody kept like raving about it saying oh I, like, why don't you love power grid or something and it's like well i could come up with about 20 reasons mm. but i'm sure you want to get on and enjoy the game so right like, yeah <laughs> don't ask me but you know another reason why maybe i enjoyed it so much was now it was a while ago so correct me if i'm wrong with these but 
in my engine, I had, I think it was the wind power where I didn't really need to worry about resources as much as yeah. everybody. And basically I had my money and I said, I need this for my next turn. So I put it over here so I couldn't see it. And then I had an engine that was pretty self-sufficient. So I got to sit and watch everybody else's brain burn while I just sat there and knew exactly what I was going to do the next turn. That was pretty satisfying. Oh, but here's quite a little bit. My FLGS owner loved this game so much that he bought 10 copies thinking it was going to be huge. Two years later, I bought a copy from him for $20. Oh wow! Wow, <laughs> that's pretty funny, mate. Leon, wow. Leon, you got ripped off. That's <laughs> <laughs> twenty dollars too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, I will say this: this is not my favorite game. I mean, it's not even in my top ten. Hmm. But just from how much I hated it, to yeah, that was a, that was a jump. It. Yeah, nah, yeah. It, exactly. fit, it, it fits the list. I certainly wouldn't have seen it coming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but. Alrighty, I number yeah, number uno. This one, probably the most recent game on my list in terms of like, oh, you know, recently acquired or was like for that, but it was ages ago since I first played it. And it was a mixture of a lot of the reasons we've said already. So, you know, right, taught really badly. <laughs> you know, person teaching three of us did not know what he was doing enough. And then the game dragged on and I thought, okay, I like a lot of stuff about this, but why does it need to be this long? Mm. And there's a lot of rules in here. Could someone teach it to me a bit better? And mm. then I played it a second time a few months back with two local uh, friends of mine at my game club. And I thought, right, last time I didn't have a good time with this, but you two are experts. You teach me this game. I'm the noob. Let's go with it. They taught it a lot better. I got it, but still thought this is long. You know, mm. I'm enjoying this, but this is long multiplayer game. Why? I don't know. But I gambled, bought the game, expansion and all, because it was half decent deal. And I thought, everybody talks that this is a solo game. So maybe 90% of the time I should play this as a solo game. And now I've seen the light. Oh. It's like Spirit Island has yeah. won me over a big time. And yeah. like I say, it takes ages to play this game in multiplayer. But I even had a multiplayer game of this on Tabletop Simulator the other night. Mm -hmm. It took all night three hmm. of us even though they knew exactly what they were doing all online games take longer but i enjoyed all of it because of the co-op nature the theme is strong i had a mm -hmm. different spirit i'd not used i think i played ocean's hungry grasp there and mm -hmm. it and it somebody mentioned it in the comments that like, you know ignacy does his whole board games that tell stories this game told a story i could tell mm -hmm. you a story tip step by step of what happened in that game in mm -hmm. terms of how it started so badly then we built up and then finally won the day with it. So it felt <laughs> like a good challenge. But I have been playing this game over and over and over again lately with solo plays of this. Like, it's actually, funny enough, before we came onto this stream, I knew that I had to sort out my dinner, but I was trying to finish a game, which is, I, I finished it. It's still over there unpacked, <laughs> like, on, that, on the edge of this table because I was playing it earlier with a different right. spirit. I've got one more to do and then I'm up to date. And I haven't even got Jagged Earth, you know, mm. so there's so much in it. But I realize now that on my technically third play, but mm -hmm. it's hard to even count the first one. Right. Uh, <laughs> this one has sung to me more as a solo game. Not to say I'll never play it multiplayer, but I'm going to be very picky about who I play it multiplayer with. It's like, oh, mm. am I the noob here? Good. And mm. that makes a change because usually I'm teaching the game and I've taught, I've played it 10 times before I teach it. Mm -hmm. Right. But now when I play this with, friends of mine who are big fans of this, like bigger fans than me, they've got the whole lot, I can say, oh, good. I know what I'm doing, sort of, but I'm still the noob. I'm still going to get guided, but it's a co-op, so they're not out to get me. They're not going <laughs> to say, we lost because of you. It's like, because right. we're all helping each other, and that's why I like co-ops. Yeah. But I must admit, playing it solo, whether I use one spirit or eventually two spirits, I've got so much variety in this game, it's going to keep me busy. It's winning me over more and more to the point where I dread to think where in the top 100 this year it's going to appear but it's going to be mm. high it is really? going to be high it it's it's just the like i say every spirit plays differently lots yeah. of cards lots of difficulty tailoring lots of variety this seems to be greater than game shtick they mm -hmm. already make sentinels in the multiverse that i love already and that's got a similar theme of a teamwork co-op game that feels like teamwork like you really do need to work together mm -hmm. but with all this kind of asymmetrical variety and let's say this one i 
sort of liked it early, but you know, but that was kind of ho hum. But like I say, it was taught badly. But from your power grid one of I hate it to love it, this is more I think it's good, but I don't know to oh my word, this is potential top 10 category. Like this wow. is really wow. shooting up, which has yeah. pleased various people like One Pit Wonder and that to no end, but because <laughs> they're big fans as well. Right. But, yeah, it's just working. I think as a solo game, it's pretty well regarded as if somebody asks for a solo game, what do you recommend? This is it. Mm. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, I can get through the game quite quick on basic difficulty playing solo. And even then, I could probably do it quicker if I wasn't thinking long on my turns. Mm -hmm. you right. know, I just got to get more used to the strategies in the game. But yeah. I just love playing every time I've just pulled out a different spirit. I mean, it was the one I had, the, had this dude first uh, and go off the pictures. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think this was the guy oh, I yeah. just tried or something. And he was very different to the one I had before. Yeah. But then... Yeah. The oceans one I played the other night. I can't mm -hmm. go anywhere inland. I have to stay on the coast. But right. constantly, yeah. I'm working on the coast. But my two teammates are just pushing people into the coast, so I can just go, you know, just drown <laughs> them. And it's like it's so satisfying. Yeah, <laughs> it's like... exactly. And when you play solo too, what you said is, you know, you can take longer. You can mm -hmm. take as long or or not as you want because it's just yeah. you. Right, mm, but it, it goes the right length. I mean, even if I'm thinking slowly, it'll probably take me an hour to play the game. It's like, cool, I could get it done quicker if I knew more about what I was doing. Right. Or, and if it takes longer, maybe it's a longer difficulty game. But I don't mind. Mm -hmm. And even in the big multiplayer, say, takes a long time, but because we're discussing everything, because I like the theme, I like the you know puzzle that you've got with each different spirit, and the fact that we we're working together, and I feel like the new player. <laughs> but not in the sense that I'm hurting everybody. It's just a case of a go. I can yeah. finally, you know, enjoy a game without having to feel like I'm wailing down on other people. It's like, no, right. for once I'm getting the advice. And it just feels <laughs> nice sometimes to not be the, the teacher for a change. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Now, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. If you had learned as a solo, do you think you would have loved it your first play? I think I would have liked it more the first time if I'd learned it solo because, I mean, I didn't have too much trouble learning it from the rule book. Right. And the theme of it already appealed to me. It's like, okay, so you're like nature yeah. spirits beating off the invaders, you know, components, you know, hit and miss, you know, it, this is the, the basic art side. And, you know, there's some cool stuff in there, but you've got the spindly little men in that. It's more like you like the artwork on the spirits and the cards rather than mm -hmm. anything else. So it's like, okay, fine, but I gloss over that part. Yeah. But yeah, I would have probably played it and gone, this is cool, let's try this one, let's try this one. But playing it multiplayer the first couple of times almost killed the game for me, right. but at least it made me understand a bit more about the strategy side of it, having two people who knew what they were doing on that front. But a bit like the uh, whistle stop one, this one just mm -hmm. kept calling out, but like really loudly <laughs> for mm. that, because I'd played it the ones before and I thought, I know I like this game, yeah. but... It's pricey. It kept going out of stock. Yeah, I wasn't certain. It's like, do I want to pull up with such a long game? But maybe. But everybody says it's great solo, so I really should try it. And I think I just needed my friends at my club to sit down with me and teach me properly and go, come on, like, the, the, this is what it's meant to be like. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, sweet. Yeah. Bought it, got it. Sold. Now it's in. I've got the. In <laughs> Well, that's I've got the insert now. You know, yeah. Britain and Games are going to send me the promos and Jagged Earth, you know, cool. so which is kind of them. So yeah. I've certainly got to do some videos for them to, as a thank you. But absolutely, yeah, but is the insert it, as good as the Baron Park insert? <laughs> well, there's no insert in the normal one, but I'm a, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fanatic of like the folded space stuff. Yeah. So the yeah. folded space insert for this one, I've done a video on it already. Is like is really good. I do cool. love that stuff. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, I will say if any if we did this list like a few weeks ago or something, it wouldn't have even been valid because it wouldn't have had that play yet. <laughs> oh, it was that I, recent. I I bought this before Easter, and mm -hmm. I had two weeks off from work to go. I was going to visit the folks for my birthday and stuff like that for a weekend, but I had two weeks off, and I thought, right, I've got Spirit Island ready for a lot of this holiday. I'm going to at least keep playing it, and. Very rarely do I play a game solo and then decide I want to play it straight away after. Even like mm. the LCGs and that, I'm like, I've played the scenario, I'm good. I've yeah. played this mission, I'm good. Spirit Island, played it. Mm -hmm. Next Spirit, play it. 
<laughs> I went next to my yeah, like, That's a sign of a great game. And then I put it away, and then the next day I'm sort of thinking, I really want to get Spirit Iron now again. Ah, oh, I've got to go to the gym. Right, go to the gym first, then play Spirit Iron. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Only 10 out of 10 games can do that to me. Like the yep. site that I want to play the game after I've finished playing it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's interesting because I don't think I have a game here that while it was better the second play, I don't think I have a game that shot up into my top 10 or close yeah. to it. So that's awesome that that did that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. this was the second play I desperately needed. Yeah. Right. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. That's actually a really good timing, actually, because, I mean, we I left that chatter there. We're almost up to the two-hour mark, so we don't need the bits on the end or something. We've conveniently wrapped up 15 games, but... Yeah, five games that needed the second play for good. Well, for good. All of them for good. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly different perspectives as to yeah. why they needed the second play. And I think that's been quite good where we've got, like, my sort of thematics that all like teaching mm -hmm. that being taught badly or at a convention versus, yeah. you know, Judy's more like entry level games being scared mm -hmm. of by like, like bad rule books or, yeah. you know, rule sets and that. So there's three very unique perspectives yeah. of why things needed the second play. Absolutely. And my actually, to be honest, from when we talked about doing this to making my list, my perspective yeah. changed. Yeah. Ah, okay. when, once I started thinking about it, it's like, oh, wait a second. What if, you know, and then all these other games popped in. I'm like, oh, yeah. So that, that was neat. It was a ni nice little journey for me to go through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, that, nah, that's a good one, though. But no, nah, that was a good idea for a list, actually, because yeah. this one desperately needed something like that. Uh, look it. at all your subs there. 971 you're on now. <gasps> so you've had a few. I wish I could have got you the thousand, but that's you're a okay. bit closer. That's you know okay. what? We had lots of fun yeah. doing this. Thank you so much for having great, us. Yeah. This yeah, is great. We, Thank you, guys. We gotta get we got to get you back soon, because a lot of people have been positive comments before and after this also so i need to as much as i'm doing somebody new nearly every week yeah. i certainly need to start doing some repeats so uh, okay <laughs> anytime if you have time try to schedule us in we would be more than happy to chat about anything with you <laughs> definitely so yep yeah, you yeah. can what's, what's your phrase join join me at the table uh no our <laughs> phrase is always anymore? go get another game off of your nerd shelves <laughs> all right well that was it. the promo you sent me last year was focused on join me at the table because you edited it about six oh, of them yeah. together yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that was funny yeah that was well that... we can always have this topic of what game you want to move from your bottom shelf to your top shelf there you go yeah because okay. usually oh, our bottom shelf well now there are lots of kids games so they can reach it but <laughs> usually games go to our bottom shelf it's the one that we might not want to play again for yeah. another three years or so that's right that's our <laughs> rating system what shelf is it on yeah the top shelf <laughs> oh, is good yeah, it's just done by publisher, so I can't be too figured about it. Oh, there right, you go. Well, that's cool. Right, we're going to shut this one down, guys. So thank you, everybody, yeah, thank for you tuning so in. This Thanks, has been everybody. fun. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone watching this after the fact will enjoy it as well. And by all means, like I say, I'm pretty certain we'll see the Nerd Shells again very soon. All right? <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.